down together. Very wow. different time. It was in my London studio. And eight days after that, you got arrested. What's the year been like for you? It's certainly been an interesting one. I've been constrained this entire year. I spent 93 days in a Romanian dungeon, five months locked in my house, and now I'm restrained within the country of Romania. So it's certainly been a turbulent time. The moment you got arrested, it was all pretty dramatic. The video came out, the world saw it, a lot of people smashing into your, your home. Did you have any inkling, warning that something like this may happen? I knew it. I kept saying before I was arrested on every single podcast I did, I said, you get three lives in the world. The first life, they're going to cancel you. They're going to slander you. They're going to delete your access to social media so you can't defend yourself. The second life, they're going to try and put you in jail for no reason. And if you continue to speak against the power, they're going to assassinate you. I knew I was on my second life. I kept saying it. I knew it was coming. I didn't know the bullshit reason they'd use, but I found out once I was in a cell. When you were arrested, you, you didn't actually, you don't speak any Romanian. Zero. Zero. And they didn't speak English to you. Correct. So you were taken to a cell. You had no idea what they were alleging you'd done. I was arrested on the 27th of December. So because of Christmas and New Year's and other problems, they couldn't even translate my paperwork for two weeks. So for the first two weeks I was in a prison cell, I had no idea why. I was given papers in Romanian. I could read human trafficking, I understood. But I was like, human trafficking who, when, what? None of this makes sense. I waited two entire weeks inside of my cell before I was given an English translation, and then I realized exactly how ridiculous the whole case was. Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. That is what I'm accused of. I told some girls I know how to post on TikTok to become viral when I was, at the time, the most viral person on the planet. And they are saying I'm a human trafficker for that reason. It is insane. Well, we'll come to what you've been accused of. It's more serious than the way you've categorized it, but we'll come to that. There is a lot of speculation that the reason the Romanian authorities knew that you were back, because you were en route, I believe, to Dubai for a New Year's Eve party, is that you were interacting with Greta Thunberg on social media, and you had a pizza in front of you, which came from a well-known Romanian pizza uh, store. Is there any truth to that? I don't think so. I think that they know where I was. A lot of people knew where I was, and uh, they had instructions from higher up to teach me a lesson. I was on my second life, and that's exactly what I'm going through right now. There's an irony to your situation because you always said the reason you came to Romania was precisely because you thought you could avoid being in this situation. Well, I loved Romania, and it's a strong Christian nation with strong traditional values. I want a life where I'm left alone by government. I don't believe in big government. I'm trying to avoid that. It felt like Romania was a place which was very safe societally, and the government was not too interested or involved in people's lives but things change. Also, your freedom and your ability to speak the truth is heavily correlated to your insignificance. When you become large and people start listening to what you say, you soon realize you no longer have freedom of speech. And it doesn't matter where you are on the planet. If they decide you must be assassinated, you will be assassinated. You in jail. What was that like? Romanian jail is not English jail. We describe it. What was the cell like? I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to insult the Romanian justice system, which I'm still beholden to. However, it's exactly as bad as people would expect it to be. Luckily, it was in the winter, so the cockroaches were not too bad. It was also during Ramadan, so I didn't have to eat so much, which was helpful because of the situation. I think the most stressful thing about it is I had no idea how long I was going to be in there for. I was dragged from my house. I was given papers in Romanian. I didn't know why I was there. I found out why I was there, and it was garbage. I couldn't seem to get out. It, I could have been held for years. It's very stressful. And uh, the best thing you can do is turn to God and, and train as hard as possible. I did thousands of push-ups a day every Were single day. Were you in day. solitary this, in this period, three months? I, no, I wasn't in solitary the entire month, the entire time. Sometimes I was by myself, sometimes I was with other guys, and sometimes I was with my brother. So, When you were on your own, were they keeping you in there for 24 hours a day? Were you allowed out? No, I wasn't allowed out. There was no yard time. It was 24 hours a day, locked in a single room, probably three or four steps large, and you do nothing but stare at the wall. And you. How many days did you do that for on your own? 11, 12. I mean, that's a pretty grim scenario for, for anyone. Life's grim. For you, always being Mr. Confident, you said, interestingly, that you wouldn't categorize what you were feeling as depression because you don't believe in the concept of depression. You and I have argued about that before. But it sounds to me, from what I've seen you say when you've talked about this, that that was pretty close to depression, what you were feeling. Life's grim. 
And if you want to be a superhero, you have to understand in every single superhero movie, he is losing for 80% of the movie. He's going to suffer for the majority of the movie before he wins at the end. I've always wanted an exceptional life, Pierce, and I'm not a coward. And I knew that by telling the truth about certain issues, I was going to pay the price for it. So I won't say that I deserve to be in jail, but I certainly put myself in there by telling the truth to the populace and telling the truth and living. But when you're on your own in that cell, what were you thinking? Transgender. It's made very, very cool through the media, through TikTok, through Reddit, through Tumblr, through Instagram, through Facebook, through Twitter, through their games, in their movies. Princess of Peach, your ball tonight was me. Why are they? It's a long time to self-reflect, right? It certainly is. And I think my number one concern when I was in jail, despite the fact that my situation was dire, were my concerns as a man and all the people I have to take care of and my children and my family and the people I pay for and all the people who work for me. And truthfully, I wasn't worried about myself. I was worried about everybody else. And I think that's the true masculine frame. Did you get emotional? Did you shed tears in yourself? I'm an emotional man. I think, I think men are hyper emotional. We just have to control it. I was extremely busy inside of my jail cell. I had lots of push-ups to do. I was very concerned about the people on the outside. I was trying my best to get out. It's difficult for me to answer the question because it was a interesting frame of mind. I knew that God was watching and I had to perform. It's very difficult for me to go through life saying, I'm the top G, I'm this, I'm that, and speak about mental resilience and mental toughness. And then the second I'm thrown inside of a solitary confinement cell, cower out. I'm not that person. There's, what, some other, I, there's some other people who talk about mental toughness and want to mm -hmm. give advice, and when bad things happen to them, they end up addicted to prescription drugs. I'm not a coward and I'm not a liar. No, but, but it would be perfectly natural to be emotional in that scenario, and there's no shame in admitting that. I was emotional. I missed people. I missed them, and I knew they missed me. So I felt a long, I felt a strong sense of missing. But you cried. There were tears that ran down my face, but I did not cry. I mean, that's crying. I would disagree. Because you, you're worried about admitting that. You think it sounds Absolutely weak. not. That's a perfectly fine scenario to cry in. But I think the act of crying is an act of desperation. To sit and to cry is an act in and of itself. To do push-ups thinking of your children with tears running down your face, but you're concerned with finishing as many push-ups as possible within that day, I do not consider that crying. I consider that tears running down my face. When you found out what they were alleging you'd done, sexual assault, exploitation, and so on. What did you feel about that? What was I, your first reaction? My first reaction was, ah, the standard playbook. The standard playbook for anybody who speaks up against power is sexual exploitation. Isn't that the normal one they go to? Can't we name like 10 or 15 people right now they hit them with this exact same garbage? Name a full-grown man who's 36 or 37 years old who's not had sexual relations with a woman at some point in the past. And the way the Matrix works is they lie by omission, right? They just hit Russell Brand with it. I think All right, folks, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. We jumped right into it today because uh, I wasn't ready to stream yet. I wasn't ready to stream yet. We're running late today. We are running late. So we jumped right into the interview. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, we'll chime in and uh, talk about stuff uh, as it comes up. I'm going to hit P. Diddy with it this morning. Julian Assange just got hit with it. He's still in the cell. But lots of people get hit with these allegations and it turns out to be true. A lot of people get hit with them and they turn out to be false. So. Yeah, but you're sort of trying to make out all the people you just named are innocent. You don't know that. Of course I don't know that, but a lot of people get hit and it turns why out would to be you false. Assume, why would you assume they're innocent? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the way the Matrix operates is it chooses something which is heinous. If they accused me of drug dealing, nobody would care. They choose something which is heinous, so the process itself is a punishment. So they damage your reputation throughout the process, regardless of whether it's successful or not. Then what they do is they lie by omission. They throw you in a cell and they contact everyone you've ever interacted with. 2,000 people I know were called, and they were looking for one person to say they're a victim. By the way, they failed. They did not even find one. But if they did, they would then say, Andrew Tate's victim, he's a sexual assaulter, and they would remove the testimony of the 1,999 people who said, I'm a very nice man. Lie by omission, and then they put together this entire package, use the mainstream media to convince the world that you deserve to be in jail, and that is how the Matrix operates. I mean, to be clear, I don't know if you're guilty or not. I do. You're perfectly entitled to say that, and you know, right? Of course I know. But I don't know, and I will await any trial that comes uh, to see what comes out in the trial and see what happens, right? So I'm not going to prejudge the trial. 
I'm not going to judge you and say, I think you're guilty. I don't know, yeah. right? We are where we are. You've been charged with serious crimes and it's likely you'll face a trial and we'll see how that all plays out, obviously. Going back to jail, how were you treated by other people? Everybody in jail was extremely apologetic to me. All of the staff, the police officers, everyone who worked in the jail, the person who served me my meal, everybody was very sorry for what happened to me. They made it very clear they knew it was garbage and they were apologetic. That was the only vibe I could give you. They were kind of like, listen, you got too big. I'm sorry. This is how things work. And sorry, here's your meal. Nobody had any real problem with me. None of the prisoners had a problem with me. Did you and get into I any fights? There was a, a, a couple scenarios where violence could have occurred, but I think once people realize that violence is a certainty and that you do not operate under a fearful realm, they often aren't so interested. So people threatened you? I wouldn't say they threatened me, but they would have liked to have got the opportunity to threaten me. And what happened? And they realized that would have been a bad decision. And all in all... Well, what, did you, what did you say to them? Because you don't speak Romanian, so... I didn't, you're right. I actually used a quote from Street Fighter. I said, uh, I quoted Dowson, and I said, they do not understand the secrets of yoga fire. So I knew they had no idea what I was talking about. It was near the washing machines, and they looked at me like I was completely crazy, and they walked away. There's more than one person. Correct. And they, they, they made it clear what? That they wanted to... I have to be careful what I say, because I'm still beholden to the Romanian judicial system. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's just an incident in jail. That's Correct. That's to do with the system. Incident, an incident report was written, and it's better I don't mention it. But there was a direct threat to you. I've had threats, yeah, and I have threats every single day of my life, and I think jail is a hyper-pressurized version of reality, and you need to have an extremely strong mind so you don't attack yourself, and an extremely strong body so others don't attack you. And I understood that there was a threat of violence at all times, and I just decided to go through life extremely respectfully, but make it clear if that's a decision somebody else wants to make that I'm prepared to partake. One of the things I would think about, other than my family, immediate family, but one particular member of my family, if I found myself in jail, would be my mother and what she would be feeling and what she'd be thinking. She's been incredibly supportive to me. I know yours has to you. Did you think about your mother? I was extremely concerned for her. I was concerned because the media establishment were hounding her. She was obviously very worried, but she knew she wrote, raised strong sons. But we're her number one protectors, and I was concerned for her. I, I wasn't concerned for myself in jail. I didn't even suffer in jail as, mo as much as I did when I got out. I didn't have nightmares in jail. I had nightmares once I left jail. I was in the middle of a battle. I don't think you get PTSD while you're fighting. You get it afterwards. I was in the middle of a battle trying to make sure that everybody I love and care about is taken care of and trying to make sure that bills are paid. Please understand, the day I was arrested, which is a year ago, every single bank account that I have was frozen. All of my assets were taken. I haven't had a, a dollar of money you had 10 since cars January. taken, I think. 15. 15 cars and, some, and how many properties? 15 cars, six properties, 20 diamond watches, gold bars, cash, land, Every single bank account, millions and millions and what millions of dollars. What was the total value of everything they seized? 16, 17 million pounds. Yeah. And they took all of it. And I still don't have access to any of these things. I mean, as we're doing this interview, you're expecting to hear sometime today as to whether you may get those possessions back. Is it, is it all or nothing? Do you get it all back or nothing? Correct. As we sit here, the judge is deciding whether I get all of my items returned or I get none of them returned. And truthfully, under the law, I should have never had them taken in the first place. So we're gonna see what the judge decides. And I have to put my faith within the Romanian judicial system. I have no other choice. I'm not a coward, I'm not gonna run. But let's not talk about the Romanian judicial system. Let's talk about the judicial systems of the world. I've recently seen some very scary decisions in America and England in these Western democratic nations. You see people doing 20 years for attending peaceful protests. So you start to sit and wonder when you're in these situations, what is a trial? What is a judge? What is this? These are just people in which a room. Peace, which peaceful process are you talking about? There's been a few. And well, I who, think who's got 20 years for attending a peaceful protest? I, I don't want to say names. I saw it somewhere on Twitter. Somebody attended, I think it was a protest, a pro-Trump protest, and they ended up getting 20 years. What if you're talking about the January 6th riots? They were riots where people died. Well, it's interesting. They're not, they're not peaceful protests. Well, it's interesting because the world is actually very nuanced. And what I tried... Well, that wasn't nuanced. Well, that was a, a huge mob of what people I tried to do attacking is, the US campaign. Well, what I tried to do is I try to look at a, a broad spectrum of, of events and I try to put things into a nuanced view and I don't try and take a instant black or white. All right, Pierce. That's some bullshit right there about J6 for sure. That was some bullshit about January 6th, for sure.
What is going on? Oh, there we go. My bad. My bad. Um, but yeah, J6 was a peaceful protest, dude. Peaceful protest infiltrated by uh, FBI and Antifa. But peaceful. Very peaceful. Very, very peaceful. And the only people that died were protesters. Peers. White point of view on things. Mm. And the fact that BLM were rioting and destroying the entire nation for months and during that exact week. And then some other people got together with a opposing political view and are facing serious prison time for doing less damage than BLM did. I find that kind of scary because- Well, under, people did a, die. Well, in a democratic nation, we should all be the same under the law. Yeah, but Andrew, just to be clear, on January the 6th, people died. People died during BLM. I mean, there are certainly inconsistencies in the way groups of people have been policed. I think well, that's, the same, that's the same whether you're talking about the BLM marches, to the uh, pro-Palestinian marches and so on, right? There's a lot of inconsistency. Well, then we agree. In, in, well, there's a lot of inconsistency in global policing, I think. I think that's a perfectly valid thing to say. But the idea that someone's got 20 years for being in a peaceful march is not true. The, the ones who've got the lengthy prison sentence. All right, they literally gave, I'm horrible with names, but the leader of the Proud Boys, um, didn't even go to the J6 rally, and he got 20 years. Didn't even attend the rally. So what are you going to say about that, Pierce? Sentences have been held account well, for I'm not even, serious crime. I'm not even condoning January 6th. I don't even know the ins and outs of January 6th. I mm. wasn't there. I'm not saying it should have happened. What I'm saying is exactly what you have said. There seems to be some massive inconsistencies in global policing now. So when you end up in a position where you're speaking against the system, as I do, and you understand that there are massive inconsistencies in policing globally, you start to sit down and seriously wonder if you stand a fair chance of a fair trial in any country on earth. I actually have to give that massive credit to the Romanian judicial system because a judge one day sat down and said, why are these boys in jail and let us go? I don't know if I would have had a fair shot like that in many other nations. When you were released from jail after about three months, what was that feeling like? I, my, my brother and I were in the same cell at that time. We were extremely happy. I remember using the last of my mouthwash. During the day, I had some rituals to keep me sane, and I'd enjoy one swig of mouthwash a day. It's amazing how bored you get when you're staring at cockroaches, and even that sensation. So there were literally cockroaches in your cell? Correct. How many at any given time? At night, there was a lot of them. Like, what, dozens? Or? Yeah, a, a few. There was an infestation. We did our best to kill as many as we could. They kept us entertained but uh, they're annoying to sleep with. But mouthwash was something I enjoyed every day. The sensation of mouthwash made me happy and I remember using all of my mouthwash. And then instantly my brain started turning to all of the things I need to do. I'm a man, I have responsibilities. For 93 days I wasn't working. I started concerning myself with, okay, I'm about to get out of jail, thank God, I'm gonna leave. Who do I need to take care of? What's paid? Do I have any money left? Are bills due? Is mom okay? Are my children okay? And I just started thinking about work. And as soon as I got out, I didn't sleep for three days. I How many children do you have? I'm less confidential. Why? Because the, I have enemies. And unfortunately, I do not want to give them any information. But you have more than one. I have more than one, correct. Right. So, obviously, you're caring for your children. I understand that as a father, right? And obviously, and you have a partner? Yes. Are you married? No. I think I asked you last time and you were a bit cryptic about it. You're not married yet. No. You have a partner who's the mother of your children. Correct. The same woman is the mother of all your kids? It's confidential. It's a bit strange. <laughs> it, it is confidential. It's, it's confidential. I don't think you marry and have kids with is confidential, surely. It is for me. Really? Of course, I am a basically number one enemy of the state peers. Look mm -hmm. what they've done to me. What have they put me in jail for? At the beginning of this garbage, people were sitting there thinking, maybe he's a human trafficker. It's been a year. Who? <laughs> show me a picture. Show me a video. Who's even in a victim? There's nobody. The whole thing is made up. Well, we're going, to come, well, we're going to come to what they say you've done, right? <laughs> we're going to come to that. But I'm just curious. You come out of prison. You've got no ability to access any of your assets. How have you been functioning financially since then? I believe in prayer and I trust in God. Well, prayer I, doesn't pay the bills. And I do my very best. But prayer doesn't pay the bills. Unfortunately, absolutely everything I own was seized by the Romanian state. So I'm just going to have to survive and do my very best. Yeah, but how? I'm doing my very best. Pierce. Have you got wealthy benefactors helping you? I'm doing my very best. I wish I had wealthy benefactors. I wish I had people on my side. Yeah, you can't function on, on no That is a good question. Seems you can. How? 
I'm doing my very best, Piers. What does that mean? It means I'm doing my very best. Absolutely everything I own is owned, is taken by the Romanian state. I don't have anything they don't have. How do you pay for food? I just have to do my best. What does that, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that... What it means is he's under investigation and any assets that he's utilizing to eat, he doesn't want to divulge and therefore have those assets also taken. That's what it means, Piers. So shut the fuck up and let the guy eat. <laughs> I believe in God and I pray. Well, God's not going to pay your bill. God has been paying my bill so far, it seems. Mm. It's amazing how far faith can take you. It's often when you have absolutely nothing left, people turn to faith. But you should turn to faith first. You should believe in God when things are good and that he will be there when times are bad. Initially, you were put on this sort of rolling 30-day house arrest. And they kept renewing that month by month by month. And then in June... Uh, you and your brother and two others were formally charged with rape, trafficking, and forming an organized crime group to sexually exploit women. And there were seven alleged victims named in the indictment. You said at the time, I look forward to being found innocent. Um, you said earlier, who are these women? Well, there are seven named in the indictment. Yeah, have you seen the videos of them on the internet saying we're not victims? They made us be victims. We told them well, we were victims. Well, that will all victims. presumably be analyzed in a trial. Do you know when the trial may be? I have no idea. It's uh, going to do, be a do you believe period. it will happen? I'm not sure. It could get to a point where a judge any time before the trial decides his case is garbage and throws it away. If you ask me what I believe happened, it's very simple. They threw me in a jail cell knowing they had no case, knowing they had no victims, but they thought if they plaster me all over the MSM and they say that I'm a bad person and they call enough people, they will find the case they want. They couldn't find it. You name the date they charged me. They had six months to charge me. Usually the Romanian state, even the American embassy, confirms to me charges within 30 days. With me, they used all six months trying to build a case and find actual victims of an actual crime. They couldn't. They charged me on the very last possible day they could, unless they'd have to drop the entire case. And they charged me with garbage because they have nothing. There are no victims. I've done nothing wrong. And they've tried very hard. And we say something very pertinent to the, to the audience here. It's very difficult when you're thrown inside of a jail cell, you do not have access to social media, you do not have access to money. The entire MSM establishment are calling you a bad person. Hotlines are set up saying, if Andrew Tate's ever hurt you, hurt you, call this hotline. You're a rich person where people may want to get money from you and exploit you and extract resource from you. And they're sitting here calling anyone you've ever known. They called my gardener's daughter, who I've never even spoken to, <laughs> asking if I've ever done anything wrong to her or said anything wrong to her, trying to find victims of a crime that don't exist. The it's gardener's actually a real daughter? God that no one's come out trying to extract money from me. Whole thing is garbage. They could do this to anybody. Piers, they could do this to you. They could put you in a cell, put all over the media you're a sexual exploiter, and for three months talk about how bad you are when you can't defend yourself and call everyone you've ever interacted with. And if anybody you were ever rude to once decides they want a payday or some fame, they can use it against you. It's insane. The, the Romanian authorities' prosecution files uh, accuse you of using verbal and physical abuse to keep women in line taking 50%, uh, I believe, of the women's online income. Although I, th I believe that figure could vary, could be up to 80%. Is that right? No, they accuse me of exploiting women who, may, who did TikTok. The same women who say we were not exploited, he just told us how to do TikTok. Also in the in prosecution file, if you want to talk about it, there's not a single bank transfer. There's not a single piece of evidence for any money. So I'm accused of making money from TikTok but they haven't found any money, there's no money, and the victims are saying, I didn't exploit them to do TikTok. What you, the whole thing is a joke. What is, I think, problematic for you is the war room, which was a, a group Miscategorized of... Miscategorized and misunderstood. It was called the war room. Correct. Okay. And it had a lot of people who were dubbed the generals who ran the war room Correct. for you. And the war room had five to 600 members who paid, I think, 6,000 plus dollars to be a member of this. And when you saw the, the logs of the web chats between people from the war room to each other, a lot of it made disturbing reading. Were you disturbed by it when you read that? Firstly, a lot of that is bullshit. A lot of that's fake. Secondly, well, you think that literally those logs are fake? Absolutely. Secondly, but the BBC verified them. The BBC verified them. Are they the same people who verified the vaccine? Those people, they're liars. <laughs> Firstly, a lot of them are fake. Secondly, the were you disturbed by anything you read? No, because none of it's real. Firstly. Secondly, there's 4,000 members in the war room. Thirdly, the war room is about masculine personal development. We talk about fitness, making money, strength. We talk about very important things. I, there's 4,000 members inside. If you're telling me that amongst 4,000 members with 24-hour chat seven days a week for the last five years, they've managed to find two guys talking locker room talk, and that somehow offends the world, then nobody understands how the world works. 
That's not why I was in jail. It's nothing to do with the war room. I was in jail because I spoke against power, because I told the truth about COVID, because I told the truth about the war in Ukraine, because I told the truth about all of these things. I don't understand why people would want to put you in jail for giving your opinions about COVID or Ukraine. Because, why would they? Why wouldn't they? Because people why listen they? to because them. Because they say, why would they say that Andrew Tate's opinion is so important on Ukraine that we have to put him in jail? Because, I, don't, I don't buy that. Okay, because I was the most Googled man on the planet, and I had a huge affinity with the most troublesome demographic for the matrix, which is the young masculine youth, the people who you need to die in wars, the people who you need to sigh off into being slaves to build the roads while telling them that they're not allowed a point of view and they're not allowed an opinion on anything. And I was saying things which was going against the narrative. And the matrix, the way it operates is it uses the MSM to purport lies, to inject slave programming into people's brains so that we live lives which are not good for us but are good for them and i was sitting there unplugging it why would they sit there and say we've put together this massive psyop we're going to convince everybody to inject themselves with poison and we're going to lock everyone in their houses and it's all a lie and we're going to let this one well, guy who everyone listens andrew to. andrew it wasn't all a lie yes it was it wasn't there was lie. a new there was a new novel coronavirus <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you. What, I'll, tell you I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what the facts were, and you can then laugh at them if you wish. Sure. But there was a novel coronavirus, yeah. COVID nineteen. Okay. It was killing thousands of people a day. Really? Uh, yes, oh, okay. Absolutely. Scary. Yeah. And as a result, I know scary. people who died. Who I know doesn't? Pe- I know people who died before Corona. Fine. Things. I'm sure people died of lots of things, but it was killing exponentially thousands and thousands of people. And then no, vaccines were developed at very high speed. And they managed to save, in my estimation, millions of lives. You may not agree with that. Absolutely. But those are facts as assumed by the body of scientific and medical experts in the, the world. The body of scientific and medical experts, you mean the matrix. I could get What is the matrix? The matrix are a bunch of people who can come up with studies from the sky to say anything they want them to say, so they can use the MSM to purport garbage inside of people's minds. Mm. So you end up locked in your house, clapping for the NHS like a performing seal, injecting yourself with experimental poison for the ninth time. It's a lie. There was no reason to lock everyone in their house. More people died Facts. from missed cancer appointments than anyone ever died of COVID. People Facts. always got the sniffles before COVID and they've always got it since. It wasn't Let me sni- ask you a question. Hang on, sir. it wasn't. Where is COVID gone? It wasn't. Diseases don't go away. It wasn't. Where's COVID gone? It wasn't. Well, COVID strains have got milder, as indeed flu did. Flu oh, used to so kill. It's gone away. Well, flu pandemic in about 100 years ago killed 50 to 100 million people. And it's got steadily milder over the decades since. This is normal medical science. Uh, pathway for most pandemics, right? So on that, I mean, your sort of cast iron, it was all matrix MSM nonsense is palpably untrue. Well, I'll tell you why that's not untrue. Let me tell you my personal experience with COVID. I'm an extremely logical person. At the beginning, when everyone was dying, dropping dead in the streets in China, which I never saw, by the way, funny. And the Italian hospitals were full. English hospitals were never full, funny. Me and my brother sat there and said, if this disease is so deadly and can damage us as strong military age males, then the world is over. So there's no point in hiding in our house. We decided to go to Sweden on day one of COVID. Day one, when everyone still believed, we went to Sweden. Why does no one talk about the fact that Sweden was open the entire time? Why does no one talk about the fact they didn't have masks or lockdown or vaccines? My brother and I partied in nightclubs seven days a week for three entire months while everyone in England Sweden locked in their house. Had, Sweden actually had a number of restrictions. Uh, not when I was there. Not it was as dr- open. Not as draconian as we had in the UK. And there are certainly legitimate questions to ask about the scale of our lockdowns. I think people panicked. They saw what was happening in, in Italy, which had the second best medical healthcare system in the world. And people were dying in massive numbers and the hospitals were overrun. <laughs> so people may have panicked. Did you hear about the guy who died in a motorcycle uh, crash and it was a COVID death? Did you hear about that one? Well, there was some, <laughs> Downing Street didn't seem very concerned with there COVID. Was a long, were there was a long debate about people dying of COVID or with COVID. I know all that. But the bottom line for me, it is indisputable that COVID was a deadly pandemic that killed a lot of people. It turned out a lot of older people more than young people, but they didn't know that at the time, not for a long period. The vaccine saved millions of people's lives. There are legitimate questions about some of the boosters, about some of the side effects of the vaccines, as there are, by the way, with all vaccines. But the idea that COVID is some invention by the matrix to suppress and control its people is for the birds, Andrew. It's well, for the birds. It seems the birds and, and I don't are think, friends. I don't think a smart guy like you actually believes that. Of course I and that's one of my problems. believe that. One of my problems I have with you is that I think you are intelligent, but I think you also adopt positions that you know are going to get the and you know the anti-matrix mob inflamed and it's just these all-encompassing views you have covid was a load of nonsense vaccines are all dangerous and killing more people than they say that i said the covid vaccine 
Well, COVID vaccine, well, you don't think they worked? No, of course not, because the idea of, of course vaccine, they worked. The, the, the word what? vaccine in and of itself is that you get... They save millions of lives. If you get a vaccine, you do not get the disease. They changed the definition of vaccine in the dictionary so they could continue to inject us with this pointless poison. Mm. The, I had the vaccine for polio. I've never had polio. You got the vaccine for COVID and you're bragging online how you have COVID for the eighth time, but it's not that bad because you've had six injections. It's insane. And please understand my position. Please understand that I'm a person who doesn't believe any of these studies, don't believe any of this garbage, don't believe the matrix. I'm a person who was in Sweden for three months mm. as everyone was afraid, locked in their houses, partying at will. Sweden and had, it was perfectly fine. They Sweden, had a lower death rate than the UK. They had a much higher death rate than their neighboring countries in Scandinavia. Did you know that? They had a lower death rate you know than that? the UK. Did you know that? It doesn't, no, I didn't know that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter to you. Of course not. So you wouldn't compare them to their immediate neighbors. You'd only compare them to a country in the UK. If you think lockdowns worked, Pierce, if you think lockdowns... I think lockdowns were only acceptable as an immediate uh, panic move, which it was, yeah, yeah. before there were vaccines. The yeah. moment they had a successful vaccine program that worked, yeah. then there was no justification for further lockdowns. You're a very important person, and you're very well respected. I'm not important, UK. I'm a journalist. No, you're very important, and you're very well respected yeah. within the UK, and you've been famous for a very long time. Were you invited to the party at Downing Street, or were you not in that sort? No. No? Oh, that's a shame. And I thought the behavior... they seemed very concerned about COVID on the TV. And by and the way, They didn't thought... seem to give a shit as soon as the TV was on. I thought that was disgraceful. And I thought Boris Johnson and the people working at Number 10 who were having those parties, uh, when I had friends of mine who were literally saying goodbye to their mothers on FaceTime on their phone because they weren't allowed in to see them, I knew people in care homes where it ripped through and killed a third of the people in the home in two weeks. And the desperation that people felt. I had a cousin who lost his father who couldn't go and see uh, his dying wife and so on. They're, they're, they're it's were, disgusting. There were terrible stories. It's criminal. Terrible stories. It's disgusting. So let me ask you a question as a professional, because we're both adults mm. and we're both very smart. As a professional, which is more likely that the government believed COVID was deadly and everybody should be truthfully afraid and locked in their houses, but because they had this spirit inside of them and they couldn't resist the idea of a party, decided to risk their lives to party, or they lied on the television trying to scare everyone and enslave them and lock them in their houses, knowing it's garbage, knowing it's a lie and not caring and had a party behind everyone's backs they didn't think they'd get caught. Which one is more likely as a professional, as a logical human? Why don't we just agree Good that question. they were a bunch of rank hypocrites, Good question. stupid people, who were behaving utterly selfishly to the extent that the queen, when her husband, Prince... Because, Pierce, that doesn't get to the point. He wants you to admit that the people watching or the people propagating the propaganda knew they were lying because they would immediately spew propaganda and then go to a fucking party. Can you admit it was bullshit? Can we do that, Pierce? Philip dies, is in the church on her own, in a mask with none of her family around her after losing a rock of 70 years. And it turned out the night before, down the street had had, I think, two parties, including a karaoke party. I think that was shameful and disgraceful. Well, I, so I we can would, agree on that. We right? can agree on that and we can wake up and start to realize, oh, maybe the government doesn't care about us. Maybe the government lies to us. Maybe they tell us things and try and scare us, but they don't actually care themselves. Maybe all they are is hypocritical, self-interested people. Maybe they are. Maybe then, and maybe they use the MSM to purport their lies, to keep everybody enslaved while they do whatever they want. And that is the matrix in and of itself. And if you speak against it and people listen to you, I'll repeat this. Don is in the building. Your ability is directly correlated to your insignificance. If you're as big as I was, the most Googled man on the planet telling the truth, you will pay the price, peers. And that is why I was locked in that cell. And I do not regret it because I live true to God. I'm not going to sit here as a coward and not tell the truth to people for as long as I live until they put a bullet in my head. Let me ask you about the lover boy method. So the suggestion is that you and your brother and others, uh, but you, let's talk about you, that you deploy the lover boy method where you would make women fall in love with you. You would then persuade them to do uh, webcam, webcam stuff, right? TikTok. Okay, but wait, let's call it webcam stuff, right? No, let's not call it that. The indictment is about TikTok. Okay, what would you make the women do? Or what would they do with you? I don't make anybody do anything. Okay. In fact, let's talk about the Loverboy method. So it's yeah. very interesting. Let's imagine the Matrix is pissed off with a said individual who's telling too much truth and everybody is listening to him. And they decide they're going to attack him with sexual assault claims. They say, ah, he's making women do, well, we found conversations where he gave advice on how to go viral on TikTok. Mm. He's making women do TikTok, but he isn't being horrible to them. He's not hitting them. He's not being mean to them. So what can we do? Let's use the lover boy method. If I was abusive and mean, they wouldn't say lover boy method. Do you know what lover boy method means? Mm. Being nice. 
He was nice and polite and kind, and they really liked him as a person. And he told them how to do TikTok. But that's not what the lover boy. He's a lover boy. That's, that's not, of course it is. Andrew, that's not what the lover boy method is. Absolutely, it is. The lover boy method is where perpetrators woo the victims with the prospect of a loving relationship until they can be forced into abusive situations or a form of slavery. This is garbage. That's actually what it means. The lover boy method is being nice to people so that you work together. Effectively, what they're trying to say here. I was nice to girls who asked me for TikTok advice, and they sang us the lover boy method. I didn't beat them into doing TikTok. I didn't force them. I didn't threaten them. In fact, I was like, "Yeah, you're very pretty. You can be pretty famous." Was there any well. element of coercion? How can there be an element? What does that even mean? Let's be professionals here. What does that even? What mean? do you think coercion means? I was coerced into this interview. You came along to me and said... You weren't coerced into this interview. Yes, I was. Or don't tell me. The bullying Pierce. MSM said, Andrew, you've got to do an interview. No. You and used... I'm going to fly all no. the way to Romania no. to do it. you do didn't me do that. Favor. You used the lover boy method. You said... So the lover boy method. Yep. Andrew, this is going to be a very interesting interview. We had a good one last time. You're a nice guy. We have some interesting conversations. I didn't say you were a nice guy. I'm going to guy. come along. Wait we're a minute, gonna, wait a minute. We're going to make some money from hey, this interview. Wait a minute. Money will be made for wait all, a minute. both sides. Wait a you minute. You me wait and a you minute. stole the profit. Wait, just to be clear, I've had no conversation with you about this interview. And the conversations I've had with your intermediary were very professional. And I said, I would like to do an interview Were with you me. nice? I've got, I'm always nice. Lover boy. You can't believe you use niceness to lover boy me because this is a profitable enterprise and I was coerced here. I make no pretense that I'm into, I've come all the way from London to Romania to Correct. interview you because yes, I want to do it on my show Correct. and that will clearly benefit me and my show. Am I a full grown consenting adult who decided the, the, to do the this idea, show? Yeah, but you're not being coerced into doing this. Am I this? a full grown consenting adult who decided to do this show? Yes. Okay, so I wasn't coerced, correct? But what's that got to do with what I've asked you? Because you were nice to me and you're saying that I wasn't That's nice like, to you. I didn't even talk to you. Being nice is the lover boy method and that Andrew, adults have no Andrew, personal I wasn't, responsibility. And I wasn't nice, nice to someone. Uh, they become your slave. I wasn't nice to you and I didn't call you a nice guy. I feel lover boy. Hmm? I feel lover boy. Yes. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. It's fine. It's, it, you had a, a website, Hustlers University, Correct. offering courses teaching husbands and boyfriends how to get their partners Absolutely into webcams. Absolutely false. The Hustlers University, which you can go to now, actually, we've changed the domain, it's university.com, mm -hmm. is a school which teaches modern wealth creation methods. We teach people how to make websites, we teach people e-com. Why, why did you call it a PhD, pimping hose degree? No, you're talking about an old video which was made satirical. Why did you call it that? Oh, that was satire. Of course it was. Nine years ago, the internet was a very different place. And if you're mm. gonna sit here and say, oh, nine years ago, you said stupid things on the internet. It's not a gotcha moment because every single person has. So have you. No, but you'd be very... So have you, because you advocate for the vaccine, you... sir. So uh, yeah, you absolutely. said stupid things on the internet. Yeah. Right, that's how things go, it's satirical. I also said I'm an astronaut. Do you believe I've been to the moon? Because I haven't, believe mm. it or not. Hustlers University teaches children how to make websites and it teaches, and it's- Is there only one reason I'm asking you? Advice. Only reason I'm asking you, you've repeatedly said in interviews since you were arrested. <laughs> I also said I was an astronaut. Do you believe that I've been to the moon? <laughs> oh, that's too funny. You have never oh, categorized God, yourself that's as too a funny. pimp. You don't think you're a pimp, right? Well, what about all the rappers? Did you ask Ice Cube if he's a pimp and a murderer and a drug dealer? I'm not Jay Z sold crap. I'm not, <laughs> interviewing, <laughs> talking I'm not interviewing them. I'm asking you whether you have at any stage in the last 15 years being oh, a pimp. Shit. Of course I've not been a pimp. I've said I'm a pimp. I've said I'm an astronaut. I've said I'm a cowboy. I've said I'm the strongest man in the world. I've said I'm James Bond. Throw me in jail. Are you just Put me in jail. Okay. I deserve it. Nine so, years ago I made a joke on the internet. So here's my question. Are you are you a fantasist? I'm not a fantasist. A fantasist? Do you have a persona that's just not you? Of course not. I am me. Well if you are you, why would you repeatedly call yourself a pimp and then now say you've never been a pimp? Are you gonna sit here and say that because I've once all right, so when a ladies' man calls himself a pimp, he doesn't mean that he's getting girls to blow strangers to give him money. That's not what he was inferring. He wasn't pimping like big pimping on fucking Hollywood Boulevard. He was pimping like he was pimping. Get your shit together, Pierce. Get your shit together said oh i'm curious whether if you, you you're trying to say to oh. me you didn't mean any of the things you said so i'm asking myself well why should i believe anything you say now in other words is what you say actually what you mean is andrew tate real or do you have a complete persona that you fueled for money that has nothing to do with the real you i don't know you tell me i exaggerated on the internet nine years ago for comedic effect 
I'd walk into a nightclub and there'd be girls at my table, like every other man who walks into a nightclub, and I'd say, pimp me. Oh no, put me in jail. 93 days was not enough with the cockroaches. I should go back. This is a matrix attack, Pierce. Every single person, every single man out there has done things worse than I've done. In fact, I will argue, if you put 99.9% .9 of men through the level of scrutiny I've been through by, by multiple federal agencies, you will find a lot worse than him saying he was a pimp on the internet nine years ago. You will find actual genuine crime. And I've done nothing. I live true to God. This is all garbage and it's not real. Like I said to you, I, I don't know if you're guilty or not. I do. Okay. And I am not guilty. No, but it's I'm, a matrix attack. I want to be clear to you, I'm not preempting your guilt. I've come here with a completely open mind. You've been charged with serious offences, but I am not going to judge you because I'm not a judge. And this is not a courtroom, right? But it's interesting to me that one of the biggest charges against you is that you're a misogynist. And you've always said, I'm not a misogynist. And then last time oh, I that's a crime? You, I may have said some things that, you know, may have been. Wait, they're charging him with misogyny? I, I, was, I was unaware that you could be charged with misogyny. <laughs> what is misogyny anyways? Because if that's meaning that men are better than women, then everybody is a misogynist, including most women. So what are we talking about? Misconstrued. But even in the last week, you've tweeted some stuff which... I'm not even sure if you're aware as you tweet this stuff, how it sounds. Read it. Okay, let's, let's read, read this. It. It's quite a long one. <laughs> let's read it. But I think it's important to read it to get a sense of how you view women. Absolutely. Any woman I date does not have a job. Um, okay, so the woman you're with doesn't have a job. No. Okay. Do you date other women? Sometimes. And your partner's fine with that? Obviously. Yeah? <laughs> and you, you're fine with that? Why wouldn't I be? Well, you think it's fine to be dating other women when you're... When you have a mother I think we're kids? consenting adults and everybody can make their own personal decisions. Okay, fair enough. Why would I be working so hard, you say, to have hundreds of millions for my woman to waste her life in slaved pennies? No, I will give you a life you can never ever afford. Private jets, five-star hotels, new cars, endless spending money and diamonds. You will be rich because you're praying for me every day and protecting my spirit. I work in the physical world, she works in the spirit realm. Women shouldn't have to work because being a good partner is a full-time job for a woman. She has to look good. All the beauty treatments are time intensive. Not about money, it takes a lot of time. She has to train every day and stay in fantastic shape. Shop to look amazing next to me. I know there are some men who do a hundred times more than this on a daily basis, but women are not as organized as men and achieving anything significant causes them huge amounts of stress. Yeah. They need to have huge sections of their day empty to waste or they will have a mental breakdown. True. And do you want- Has he said anything incorrect yet? You're reading it, he, Pierce is reading this like it's all wrong. Are you going to point out what's wrong in there? A woman who's stressed and angry after the commute, unshaven and exhausted. Or do you want a Barbie doll who's always smiling and saying thank you because she did her nails and brought you Prada that day? As a man, unless you're a loser, you're already filthy rich, right? You can get endless sex anyway. Girls are easy. So what can a girl give you? Happiness, vibes, always smiling. Take the edge of a stressful life. Can she always be happy if she's been working all day? No. Just to wake up at 11, gym till 1, one appointment and some shopping. Dress beautiful by 7 p.m. for you to finish working and tell you how strong you are. No matter how pissed off you are, just to always be laughing and smiling and writing your little notes about how you're perfect. And just to be playful and funny. She can't do that if she has a job. So your job is being my girlfriend and now you're a millionaire. Congratulations. Behave and aim for the promotion to wife. For a limited time, this right here, which is the Vanish holster, the most comfortable holster on the planet and one that we have sold. The reason I read all that in detail was I don't think you understand quite how that comes over because I think. All right, I'm still waiting for him to correct something in there that was incorrect. Donna, you're a chick. You're in the chat. Was anything in that incorrect? Let me know. That is the purest definition of misogyny I've probably ever read. Well, I don't think you understand. One, especially when I'm talking about the fact that women can't handle all right, so Donna put, according to Webster's Dictionary, misogyny is a noun, means hatred of, aversion to, or a prejudice against women. So, you can't be a pimp and a misogynist. Because pimps love women, because that's how they get paid. So there's no hatred, there's no aversion, and there's no prejudice because pimps love women. So, 
No pimp in history has ever been a misogynist. It's not happened. See, Donna said all 100% facts. There it is, Pierce. You don't have a vagina. You cannot speak for vaginas. <laughs> Uh, One is slightly yeah. sarcastic. There's a sarcastic tone. So do you mean any of this? Oh, I mean all of it. Any woman I'm with, I will provide for because so I No woman should her. work. They should spend all day beautifying themselves for Facts. you. Facts. Right? And they make you promoted this to is, wife. This is Your my job is being my girlfriend. Correct. There are there are hundreds of millions of women around the world who do a good day's work who still... Yeah, but should they, Pierce? Should the women all over the world be putting in a hard day's work? Should they? Or should they be at home baking muffins and fucking doing pot roast and shit? Because I think if you asked all these women across the globe putting in a hard day's work, they'd rather be at home making fucking muffins. At least anyone I've ever talked to, they'd rather make muffins. <laughs> Still managed to be a very good wife or Agreed. partner. Right? Agreed. Completely. But it's oh, so why would you shit. encourage why would you encourage a whole <laughs> generation of young men? I mean, I've got to be honest, since our last two interviews before you were arrested, I would say every single day I have young men, mm. teenage boys, maybe early twenties, coming up to me asking about you. Yep. It's gone on every day yep. since I interviewed you. I'm very aware of your reach, I'm very aware of your influence. And I've, I've, whenever I've been asked about it, you say, what do you think of him? I said, I don't really know. I find myself agreeing with 60 to 70% of the things you say, and I do, because I think a lot of the stuff you say about empowering young yeah. men to be confident, to work out, to take care of themselves. To have enough to, money to not, allow, not force their woman to work. Right. But, well, that's the bit. That's the bit where when you stray into that kind of language, particularly in the detail where you reveal what you're really thinking, A, the kind of pathetic, soulless life you want for these women. Where does it allow for being a mother, for example? Being absolutely that's How does a mother of your children manage to find time for being a mother? How does in this Wait, did Pierce really just say, how does the woman that you provide for who can stay home all day have time to be a mother? Are are you fucking retarded, bro? Are you retarded? What? <laughs> routine of love what? and devotion does, to you how does having a job give her time to be a mother this gives her all the time <laughs> in the world to be a mother one it's slightly sarcastic firstly what, what, Secondly, do, you, what, what do you mean well, you, do you mean you tell don't, by the tone do you mean you don't mean it no i mean it well, what, which, which but bit? it's slightly sarcastic well sarcasm means effect. sarcasm means you don't mean it no i mean it but it's slightly well, sarcastic. you either mean it or you don't it's either sarcastic or it's not i mean every single word but this is the conundrum with you andrew. andrew sarcastic this is the conundrum with you right it's because not a conundrum if you'd let me explain it's not a conundrum at all it's just you're using the wrong word. It's not sarcasm. It's, uh, what do they say, tongue-in-cheek? Like, he means what he's saying, but he's saying it in a way that comes off snarty. Is snarty even a word? I don't know. Oh, you tweet, and also, you what's tweet this. Interesting, I tweeted this out. I get thousands of women yeah. begging me, in, inboxing me, saying, finally, a man who understands he needs to provide for a woman so she can be her best self. Right. This is exactly the kind of life that will allow no, no, to There are definitely women that will absolutely love to be so why don't you, treated why, why, like this. Pierce is a conundrum. Uh, no, but what I think they are, <laughs> they're people who just basically, it's the old sugar daddy <laughs> thing, right? They want to have a rich guy who's going to pamper them and take care of them. They don't have to do a day's work. They just have to make Being themselves look good for you. Being a good partner is a day's work. Well, so you say. Yeah. But it also, the language that you use here seriously diminishes. All right. So who's being more diminishing to women? Andrew Tate, who says, provide for the woman so she can be the best girlfriend. And being a good girlfriend or a good wife is a full-time job. Or Pierce over here is like, no, you need to send the bitch to work and she's got to be a good girlfriend. <laughs> I think Pierce is coming off of more of a misogynist than Andrew Tate because Andrew Tate wants to provide and take care of women and Pierce wants him pumping his fucking gas. <laughs> women who do work you make them out to be well you're not doing your job 
as a partner or oh, wife. Oh, shit. You should be doing your job, which is just to devote yourself to his pleasure and making well, him well, happy. Well, it's actually interesting you say that because I'll put a lot of the fault of this on men. Let's, let's, if you want to gender the argument, let's do that. I think that... See, I have confirmation from Donna in the chat. Pierce is the one being sexist with his point of view, not Andrew Tate. A lot of the reason why women can't live this life, if they so choose, if you're a woman who decides to work, then go to work. I don't care. But if you're a woman who decides she wants to retire, it's because she can't find a man who could provide for her at this level. Hmm. Do you think when a woman marries a billionaire that she wants to go get a job in Starbucks? Because in my experience, when they marry extremely successful men, they don't want a job. I'm sure Ronaldo's wife isn't begging to go work in Ikea. Actually, no. Ronaldo's wife works very hard. <laughs> she works for herself. Which is different. And her family. Of course. Yeah. Which is different. She's a hard working woman. Absolutely. Actually. Because mm -hmm. being a fantastic partner and having a bunch of children is a bunch of hard work. Mm -hmm. And she also finds the energy to have a, a, a businesses on the side. Fantastic. Right. But, you so don't what we're want, here, but you don't want women to have business. No, I'm saying if you're with a man. He of doesn't want stature, them to have to. You don't have to work. Now, if I met a perfect woman and we were together and we were happy. When you say a man of your statue, with respect, right now you have no income, no possessions. Correct. I'm completely And you're flat. facing. You're facing broke. serious criminal charges. I mean, I'm not quite sure what statue you think you're currently selling, but it ain't great. Okay, well then, it's a shame all those women inbox me after I put that tweet out saying, I've got no we agree with you. I think you should interview I met a woman yesterday who, when views. I said I was coming to interview, was immediately like, oh, can you put a good word in for me? Of course. Sure. You have a, you have a definite appeal to a certain type of woman. There's no question. I my, think my providing question, for my question a woman is financially I'm... is a man's responsibility. If that means I'm a misogynist, then I'm a misogynist. No, my, is, I think so you accept, you accept you are a misogynist? No, I think a man should provide... That's what you got out of it? Completely and utterly. If she wants to work, if my partner were to say to me right now, I really feel like getting a job, it would make me happy. Then I'll say work. But she doesn't have to. Her job is looking after the children, looking after me, and being as happy as possible. If you think I'm a bad person for saying, if you actually read that, read mm. the subtext and context. I read it I'm all saying, out. Okay, good. Then you'll understand what I'm saying. You know I did. You heard it. Well, absolutely. So what I'm saying is, I am a man. My life is stressful. My life is pain. I go to jail. I suffer. I have to deal with making money. I have constant, endless headache. I do all of that so I can give you everything, but then I get to have you. Your job is to be happy. I want you to smile. I want you to look your best and feel your best all of the time. If I'm a misogynist for saying that I go through so much pain so that we can be financially secure, so I hope the woman I care about does not have to work a job. If that makes me a bad person, then so be it. Because all I'm saying is I want to take care of her in every single realm. I take care of her physical safety. I take care of her financial security. That is my job as a man. And if more men acted like me, you will see that the world would be a happier and better place. The women who say, I really want to work, I want a career, that's their prerogative and their decision. They're allowed to do that. But also, often the reason they do that is because they can't find a man they trust to take care of them. No. I've, had this, I've had this from women in their own Andrew, mouth. If I found a man who was said, financially secure and as smart as you, I wouldn't be doing this fine. garbage job either. Why was I psyoped into working to pay taxes when I should be at home having children oh, with a Andrew, man I adore? Andrew, it's a Andrew, <laughs> there are so many women that will listen to that and be laughing uh. and mocking you. Will say, there? Say, don't be so ridiculous. No, there won't, I have dude. a job that I love. Maybe they're being paid even more than their <laughs> man, right? The real world isn't the one that you categorize. Is this guy a fucking retard, bro? Is this guy a fucking retard? How many women have you met who love their job? Meaning, you walk up to the woman and you say, I will give you $10 million so you don't have to work. And they all go, no, I love my job. You will be able to find men who won't take the money, who want to work. It's an in, it's innate within men, most men, not me. I'll take the fucking money. But most money, will, most men will work. That's what we do. We work. But to say that women are built the same way is fucking retarded, bro. You are retarded. There's, there's... All right, I'll, I'll give Pierce this. There are some women... I was trying to think of all the women I've ever met in my life. And I had somewhat of a, a business mentor... Uh, was a lady. She owned an insurance agency for 30 to 40 years. She went through three or four husbands. So she wants to work. She wants to work. So I'll, gi I'll give you, there's one. I know one. But that's not women. That's the 
That's the, um, uh, what do you call it? That's the, um, minority view. Pierce thinks that the minority view is women want to be taken care of by men. And that most women want to take care of themselves. That is completely fucking retarded. It's the other way around, dude. The real world is varied and nuanced, mm. but I am talking about my life experience. There's a in very my experience. Any woman I love Fine. does not have to work unless she decides. Right. You're the boss. You're in charge. Her job is to make you happy. Her job is to make herself look good. Her job is to work out for your benefit. Blah 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 blah. It is actually just misogyny. Do you think a woman looking and it's good? Also, do you think a woman what? looking good and working out is, has no benefit at all to her? Of course it does. Okay, so it's not for my benefit, then, is it? You no, but you see, but when you, you no, but when you talk you about when you talk about young, no, no, I don't. When you talk about young men and you tell them to work out and take care of themselves, I cheer you on, right? I want that. I've got three sons. I want them to feel that. Don't you getting... want them to become very rich and successful? And of course. Have a woman who relies on them and have of a beautiful course. family. No, but I don't want a woman who's subservient to them. Why is subservience? Why is a literally woman the relying... tone of the tweet I read is subservience? You did another tweet this week. All right, Pierce doesn't want women being subservient to their boyfriends and their husband. He just wants them subservient to their boss. That's what I don't understand. It, they're still subservient to a man. It's just not the man who's taking care of them and actually cares about them. It's the man who's holding a managerial position over her and bossing her around for his fucking benefit. Like, that's okay. It's, it's uh, I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Men love by telling you what to do and not allowing you to make stupid decisions. We save you from the female inclination to make stupid choices. If a man isn't giving you instructions, he doesn't love you. If you won't listen to a man's instructions, you don't love him. There's a whole language Correct. is so ridiculous. Let me change the language then. Well, father, you tweeted this to 8.2 million You don't people. need to change the language. The language was perfect. A father loves. Let's say instead of a man loves, say a father loves. A father loves disciplinarian. That's how a father will love you. A mother will say, oh, I hope you're happy. Hope you're doing okay. But, but a father will come along and say, no, don't do this. You must do it that way. That's incorrect. It has to be this mm. way. A father will discipline you because a father feels he knows best for you. It's the masculine essence of love. When a man loves, he shows that he cares by a degree. And there is a massive difference between a relationship between a father and a child and between a man and a woman in a relationship. Completely. And I'm not sure you quite get no, that. No, there is a difference. But I would argue, Piers, I would argue in the happiest relationships, it's a traditionally masculine role in which the man plays and provides. The female is traditionally <laughs> feminine. The man is the head of the house. Not in an abusive way. Doesn't beat her up. I'm talking about the man being the head of the household, like I would like to believe you're the head of your household. And he comes along and says what happens and what doesn't happen because he's the man of the house. No, that's not. That is, that's that actually is not how most. Amik says, notice it's a manager, not a womanager. <laughs> Households operate now. Well, then it sounds like uh, we understand they why the entire world's a mess. Because only ten years ago, that's exactly how the households uh, were operated. There was a man of the house, and now we have no longer any clear defined roles. There's no more longer a man of the house. You want to talk about knife crime, kids doing drugs, uh, the crime rate, all of these problems. You want to talk about all of the societal ills we face. Uh, Perhaps it's because we don't have any men in the house anymore. Perhaps we need to bring the man of the house back, and the man of the house will come along and be a disciplinarian, and he will make the set rules and the creeds of that house. He will say, within this household, we don't take drugs. That stands for the woman I am with, the children who we have birthed. Nobody takes drugs in this household because this is my house and I'm the man of the house. So it sounds to me like we need to bring it back. So the Eight Sleep is a pod cover that fits on a mattress like a fitted sheet, but yeah, it's temperature loud. controlled, so it can heat back, sir. Yeah, listen, it's all good macho stuff. Okay, and I know lots of young boys who listen to this and go, wow, that's how I should be. Then I read the detail of your tweets. And again, come back to this. We save women from their female inclination to make stupid choices. Females are emotional. If a man isn't giving you instructions. Now, females are hang emotional. Hang on, hang on. Peers. He doesn't females love you. Are, all, this stuff, emotional. all this stuff is designed to, exactly as you've just articulated, is designed to make young men feel that the only way they can be successful in life is to effectively have their women under control, give them instructions that, they have, them that they have to obey. Oh, don't you but here, but here, don't me, buy women Prada, you'll end up in jail. You can buy them Prada, but let me, let me finish my point. 
My point is that it seems to me from reading your tweets, even now, that you have a blind spot when it comes to how they sound. I th and it may no, be, and it may be that the legal problems that you're in, which might be extremely serious, and we'll see when the trial happens, but it may be that in your head, nothing you've done is remotely inappropriate because actually in your tweets, you can see there's an element there of wanting coercion and control. You want to control women. You want them to be effectively your servants, slaves, for want of a better slaves, phrase. Slaves who get Prada and get to work out in the gym and get to look good. But while, you understand, while I, while do you under I do but you understand the point I'm making? No, I don't. Because Which is in your head, the line is blurred so much now with this macho rhetoric that you've actually lost track of how this sounds. Here's all of the things I Even mean. when I read that stuff to you, I could see you looking at me and you said, your answer is, I was being sarcastic. No. And I said, well, where? And then you go, well, no, I meant it. But it can't be both. I meant it and I said you either mean it. Tone you either mean it effect. or it's, well, no, because sarcasm means you don't mean it. Pierce. That's not what sarcasm means. means. Do, you, do you accept that? No, I, You're a I smart meant... guy. You know what sarcasm means, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I said it has a sarcastic tone for comedic effect. Mm. All the things I'm saying, and the things I've said are basically the way the entire world thought only 10 years ago. You may buy into the PSYOP, you may buy into the new thing. I don't buy into any PSYOPs. Uh, we just talked about the vaccine, sir. Yeah, the vaccines I... weren't PSYOPs. Uh, of course <laughs> okay. not. So I believe that there should be a man of the house. You had a polio vaccine, right? Correct. Why? Because I didn't get polio. I wouldn't have a COVID <laughs> vaccine, so I'd still get COVID. Plus, probably myocarditis and have a heart attack. Mm. So... <laughs> We believe there was a man you, of the house 10 years think, ago. Do you think statistically more people got myocarditis um, by having the vaccine or not having it? I think statistically we need to bring you don't, back. You don't know, do you? Why would I know? Why would I look at the statistics why would you bother to, why would that you, come from the matrix itself? So the matrix, I, so every fact you don't like, because it doesn't suit your agenda, you just dismiss as matrix bullshit. No, I'll give you a very simple way I view the world. COVID can't hurt me, so mm. why would I take their injection? Mm. You Point don't two. have to. Point two. You don't have to they take They tried it. to make us, including you. Yeah. You told people yes. you they know should why? have the vaccine. You know why? If they don't have it, they shouldn't leave their house. You know why? Because at the time, the scientists... Well, the and scientists. by the way, scientists is ever-evolving. At the time I said that, the scientists said if you had the vaccine, it would prevent you transmitting the virus. The Matrix. Pierce is not getting it. You were lied to by the scientist. <laughs> That turned out to be wrong, the and they lies. issued updated advice saying oh, further you. studies said oh, that you. actually you could transmit it. <laughs> that and at that point... There was no updated device, dude. They knew during the trials of it, it wasn't going to fucking work. That it had a high risk of myocarditis. They knew all this shit before they pushed it out, mandated it, and fired motherfuckers for not taking it. It wasn't new science, dumbass. You know what I did, which you never do? I held my hands up and went, I was wrong because the advice changed and now I would not say the same thing. That is called actually evolving opinions when facts change. Let me give That's you actually how a civilized democracy works. Oh, is it? We live in a civilized democracy, do we, sir? I actually would argue that point with you for, very, for a very long time. I don't mm -hmm. think we live in a civilized democracy. Another point I want to make here, if I had cancer or if I was at threat of a genuine disease which could actually harm me, would the NHS text me 10 times a day trying to get me treatment or would I be sitting there waiting for eight I think months the way to the, get an appointment? I think the way they wouldn't care about me and they'd let me die. The way so the, the fact that they will endlessly text me and try and <laughs> beg me to get this poison should have been an alarm bell, bell for anybody with a brain. Actually, they've, I'll tell you what the NHS has sent me. I'm a 58-year-old man. In the last few months, they've sent me uh, one about a flu jab which I'm going to have um, because I think it stops you getting flu and flu's nasty. It doesn't. Uh, a COVID booster, which I won't have. I think I've had enough of those. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Thanks. Uh, they sent me one about having uh, a check for a bowel cancer, which I've done and came back negative and so on and so on. The NHS texting system is for our benefit. You don't have to do it. No one's holding a gun to your head. The matrix isn't saying, mm. if you don't have this, Andrew Tate, we're going we're gonna to do something to you. Do you have any idea? You're how not in, you, you've not been treated. That is what the Matrix did, dumbass. How many people lost their jobs? How many businesses were closed? How many people were let out of the military? What is this idiot fucking talking about, dude? ...in Romania by their system because of anything to do with COVID vaccines. Do and you, your attempt to try and persuade people that that's the case is ridiculous. And you know it's ridiculous. Do you have any idea how difficult it was to remain unvaccinated, Pierce? Let me tell you from somebody who was unvaccinated and traveled the world. Do you have any idea how difficult that was well, actually yes, to do? Well, yes, because countries have border controls. Oh, because they tried to force everybody. Mm. So to sit and say they weren't trying to force, you know what they did? 
They said, come get the COVID vaccine. It's good for you. It's going to help. They tried to coerce you by being nice. They tried to lover boy everybody. Mm. They tried to use the lover boy method to force people to get the COVID vaccine. It just came to, we need to put all these people in jail. They were being nice to people trying to help them. Unbelievable. Nobody forced you to have it. Did you have the vaccine? Absolutely and utterly not, sir. My principles are not for sale. I would have stayed in my house. Absolutely and utterly not. And sat there as a pure blood, the last one, oh, the last pure blood Andrew, on the planet before Andrew, I inject myself with poison. You're not making an MGM trailer. Yes, I am. I differ, Andrew Tate. You're going to get your fucking jab before I get mine, my guy. I can guarantee that. <laughs> I will be the last one. I will be the last one, not you. Because it's a matter of principle. I am not a farm animal. My blood is mine. It does not belong to the government, and I decide what is in it. Right. All right. So you have a polio vaccine, but not correct, a COVID one. Correct. So your brilliant brain has determined that you know more about the uh, medicinal and scientific benefits of individual vaccines. You got a polio, polio vaccine, vaccine when he was a child. You fucking moron. Will have that. But even though a lot of people, by the way, have had side effects to polio vaccines, did you know that? Yes, correct. Is that the matrix? To Oh, and by the way, the polio vaccine didn't fucking eradicate polio either. Pierce. Fucking idiot. Doing that? No, I didn't say the Matrix gave him the side effect. Oh. I've just told you all the reasons I didn't get the vaccine. Right. You've already described it at length. But you work out with your brilliant mind which vaccines to have. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. You realize that. You can join my email list on corporatate.com. You can sign up for free and I'll tell you which vaccines I, you I wouldn't have. come to you for vaccine <laughs> advice. <laughs> Why? Andrew. Because I you wouldn't. have zero experience. I didn't get I didn't get the COVID one. Advice. I, did, I obviously did pretty good. I avoided the poison shot while everyone else got it. So I'm actually pretty proud of my track record. What happens if you're found guilty of the things you're charged with? Well, then I'm going to have to go to jail, I assume. What's the maximum yeah. sentence you could get? I don't know. Yes, I don't. You do. I, I actually genuinely don't. You've know. never asked your lawyers? I, it, it can be between three to eight years, I right. think. So you do know? I don't know the maximum But if you sentence. were to serve eight years, having served three months and know how bad that was, yeah. Could you cope with that in a Romanian jail? Interesting question. Could, Could I you? cope with it? Yes. Would I be the same afterwards? I'm not sure. What do you think even the three months did to you as a man? Well, it was a fantastic test from God to make sure I am the man I say I am. Because I think there's a lot of people who speak about masculine excellence who are not the men they say they are. When trouble appears, you often learn that they are nothing. All right, Donna says, long as I've watched either of these gentlemen so far, Tate makes the most sense. Of course, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. But your opinion is correct on this, Donna. You are correct. Pierce is a fucking moron. Um, and Tate's hilarious. <laughs> as a wildlife photographer, shooting in low light is nothing new. But for me and many photographers, I had nightmares for a very long time. I couldn't sleep. I struggled with certain things. I would check my bed sheets every single night for cockroaches religiously. I had a problem with that, but I never turned to therapy. I never turned to drugs. I understood that all of these things are from God and they're given to me so that I can become a stronger version of myself. And I welcomed them all and I embraced them all. And now that I'm a better, not completely, but almost better, part of me actually misses my nightmares, Pierce. Part of me misses training all night. I didn't sleep. For weeks, you said, you said you didn't have nightmares. No, I had nightmares. I said I didn't have nightmares in jail. When I left, I did. And I kind of miss it because I had so much time in the day to get things done. And now I'm sleeping a full six hours. I feel a little bit lazy. So perhaps I need another test from God. And if God decides, Allah is the best of planners. If he decides I need eight years in jail, then I will embrace those eight years in jail and do my absolute best to come out as the most formidable version of myself. Have you felt suicidal at all in the last year? I don't believe in suicide. It's haram. I know. you said that before, but did you feel... Like you may want to end it all? I would never kill myself under any circumstances. So the day they put that on the news, when they finally take me out, you can know it's a lie. It's haram. I would never kill myself. Lock me in that cell for the rest of my life. I would never kill myself. While you were under house arrest, you, you tweeted this. Avoid women who go to festivals. They're either on some loser's table who's feeding them cocaine or in a crowd of sweaty peasants because they're a sweaty <laughs> peasant. Endless Instagram <laughs> stories screaming and having fun to prove to the world they're worthless. Sweaty peasants. Past, <laughs> Correct. I 
tweeted that, yes. Again, why would you categorize all women who go to festivals in such an unpleasant way? I actually categorized all men who went to festivals also. Did you read that tweet? Why are you gendering the argument? I think all people who go to festivals are stupid. It is peasantry. I've never been to a festival in my life. I'm not going to stand there and scream and jump up and down for some other human like he's God. I think the whole thing is embarrassing, all of it from head to toe. It's all sweaty peasantry, and it's all just drunk you and insanity. So why are you gendering the argument when I insult the women who go to festivals and also the men who go to festivals because all of it is peasantry head to toe and i do not regret it all <laughs> festivals are peasantry anybody <laughs> it's all sweaty sweaty <laughs> peasantry oh <laughs> oh uh, uh, does anybody else find andrew tate as one of the funniest fucking people or is it just me because this guy cracks me up dude this guy cracks me up. <laughs> Sweaty peasantry. <laughs> Who goes, I do not associate with. I've never been to one in my life. I never will. So you've never been to one. How do you know what they're like? I can see enough. I've seen the sweaty bodies bumping into each other high on ketamine, pretending that the song they heard on the radio at home is now more fantastic because they're listening to it from a loudspeaker. I get it, but just it's to, be, but to be clear, you've never been to one. Correct. Okay. My infinite brain that understands vaccines no, no, perfectly we've established also understands. You have, we have established your brain is unique. Correct. Uh, you, you tweeted a picture of Amanda Holden, a very good friend of mine. Uh, it's a very harmless picture. She's in a bikini on holiday under uh, a rain shower, uh, looking extraordinarily uh, beautiful. In a sexual pose. And you tweeted, you are a wife and a mother and you're far past a teenager. There's no need for this post. Agreed. Again, it's just misogynist to say that. It's not misogynist. What kind of woman of her age, she's just turned 50, what kind of woman of that age actually show off her beautiful body in a, in a nice bikini like that? What's you, wrong with that? You can call me crazy. Because you're 50. But I Nobody wants to fucking see it. The ripe age of 50, any woman should not be interested in thirst trapping on Instagram. I think she has bigger responsibilities. Facts. I'm sure she's a very intelligent lady and she's mm. done amazing things. She's famous. She's obviously very capable. And I think she could do things more interesting than standing around trying to thirst trap on Instagram like she's 18. Because the last... I think she's above it. I wasn't insulting her. I was reminding her that mm. she's actually such a fantastic person. She's done such amazing things in her life and she's so <laughs> achieved that she's actually above thirst trapping. I was reminding of her of her worth mm. because... As a feminist, we're all feminists here, right? We all believe in women empowerment. I'm reminding of her, her of her worth. Are you a feminist? Sure. Well, you're not, though, are you? I believe in feminine empowerment, and I think feminine empowerment no, is in... Yes, I do. And feminine empowerment only is in only, modesty. Modesty is empowering only, for, fem, for females. You only believe in... Taking your clothes off for men on Instagram is not empowering. You it's empowering when you say, no man but my husband can see my body. That Facts. is female empowerment. Facts. And I was reminding her of that. I was Facts. reminding her of her ripe age and her intellect, and there was no need for that. <laughs> How old are you now? I am 36. 36. <laughs> I was reminding her of her ripe age and her intellect. Stop being a dirty Instagram whore. You're 50. <laughs> Six years old. Correct. At what point will your antics, you know, chugging uh, your cigars in your ripped uh, body, good in your compound with your security and your Bugatti. So, at what age does that become a thirst trap? I don't know if that ever stops being a thirst trap. Because... So it's fine for you. Once again, one rule for the man, another rule for the woman. Well, that's Correct. Men and I, women I aren't the same, Pierce. Before, but I'm extremely intelligent. I've already <laughs> deciphered how this is going to go from head to toe. It's called, I guess we can look at peacocks, right? The male peacock, he shows, look who I am. Look, look what I can do. Look at my mm. achievement. Look at my beautiful feathers. And I guess you could call it peacocking to a degree. I'm showing the world. So you I'm showing, extremely, you I'm showing extremely your... physical capable. I'm extremely physically capable. Yes, that's correct. I'm extremely financially successful. But you yes, stripping off for Instagram is fine. It's not stripping but off for Instagram. You I'm do boxing. It, you, you do box, you box. No, no, you, have no you, top do, on. you do it all the time with your cigar and you're showing off your rip. But that's fine for you. But if Amanda Holden dares do it, that is a... All right, Pierce should secretly admitted to jerking off to Andrew Tate interviews. That was fucking weird. <laughs> Apparently thirst trapping. I think me boxing with no shirt on is different than a 50-year-old woman posting. You don't just box. I've seen you doing ones where you wander around all moody with your cigar and you're topless and stuff. So fine for you. Are you a fan, Pierce? Uh, no, I yeah, he's a fan, trap. bro. Do you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't do that. Perhaps it's successful. Maybe you should start. Perhaps it's successful because I do have a lot of female fans out there in the world. And I pretend I'm a misogynist, but it turns out that 85% of women on the planet seem to agree with me. Every single woman I've ever oh, met in shit. real life agrees with me. I have no female hate at all. I've never had neg negative interaction with women ever. Yes, you have. With who? Well, what about the BBC journalists that came to your compound? <laughs> <laughs> this mistake is costing Amazon Prime shoppers big. Are you still using Prime? 
because at this point, no, we're not, bro. Th- we're Lucy. not. <laughs> yes. Oh, I've never I had a negative she, interaction with a female. I don't ever. think she was a fan. I think she was. Oh, we categorize that as a negative interaction. <laughs> well, she seemed to follow me around for a long time. I think she was a little bit. There are obsessed. lots of women, Andrew. There are lots of women I know personally. There are lots of women who find you incredibly mm. offensive. I don't think so. Right? It's their right to. It's your of right course, to. Of course. It's your right to not care. Yep. But the idea that somehow you're this beloved person for the world's females, I think is. Uh, he didn't say that every female likes him. He said he's never had a negative interaction in person with a female. So let's 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 stick to the fucking argument here, Pierce. He's not saying you don't know some ugly feminist who hate Andrew Tate. We're sure that you do. He's saying he's never had a negative interaction with a female. In person. <laughs> uh, not true. You are for a certain type of woman who oh. likes to be treated in the way that you like to treat women. Well, let's counter that argument, right? Because the world, as I said at the beginning, is nuanced. Am I beloved by all females? No. But when I'm sat here with someone as prestigious as you who says you're a misogynist and you hate women and women hate I you. I think you talk in a way that is misogynistic, yeah. Okay, well then you make it sound like all women hate me and that's also not the case. Of course, it's a nuanced I argument. I didn't say all women hate you. Some, some women agree with me, mm. some women don't agree mm. with me. When I said that post about Amanda Holden, a lot of women said, Andrew, that's actually completely correct. She's extremely famous and there's no need for her to be posting video pictures like this at her ripe age. I was actually empowering her. I believe that female empowerment is in modesty. You don't actually believe in feminism. I believe in the idea of... And Pierce, who is your cameraman, bro? Because you have this giant fucking bald spot right here in the back of your head. Your cameraman could have easily slid over two inches so we didn't have to stare at your fucking bald spot. So can you talk to your cameraman for us all? We don't want to stare at your bald spot, all right? Um, You believe in masculinity controlling... Women. No. They have to take instructions from you. They have to do what you tell them. And that is actually what love and relationships are about. No, I believe that men and women have different roles. I believe that we were created differently by God because we are the perfect team. No, Donna, he's that, that retarded. Who's in he's that retarded. Frame is best suited by a woman who's in her feminine frame. I believe when we work together, we can achieve amazing things, whether it's raising children or preserving society. And I believe a man has certain jobs and a woman has certain jobs. You don't understand this about the things I say. When I said there that women make bad decisions in the tweet you referenced earlier, Mm. the point I was making is that women are more emotional than men. That is their superpower. That is fantastic. That is a great thing. I love female emotionality. In the tweet before you tried to use against me, I was talking about how I love a woman to be happy all the time, smiling all the time while I'm stressed. I love female emotionality. The reason women are better no, with no, children, the not, reason women are better with children is because they're emotional. Not what that is their superpower. That's not what your, not what your position, tweet said. In a position- You're not of, even remembering what you wrote. Of course it is. I said female women are more emotional than men is exactly what I said. I'm saying that is a fantastic thing, Mm. but there is no light without dark. So in certain situations, the emotionality is positive. In certain situations, the emotionality is negative. We can also argue the same for men because what happens with me is everyone tries to gender my arguments. We can actually argue the same with men. Stoicism, male stoicism is positive in certain scenarios. It can be negative in others. We can come across as unempathetic or not care because we're stoic. But in certain situations, it benefits I know people who've told me that their kids who are in their late teens, they're at schools where the name Andrew Tate is banned. Nobody's allowed to mention your name because the teachers (laughs) think that your brand of masculinity is so toxic, they are seeing a immediate effect on the way that young men behave and not in a good way. Is that what the teachers think, is it? Yeah. Well, I am actually genuinely concerned by the fact that I've been banned from schools when I do nothing but preach masculine strength and excellence. But then if you actually understand how the society is going and how the world works and all the insanity they're trying to push on all of us, I can understand why they banned me because I speak the truth. If I was wearing a wig, Piers, mm. and lipstick and telling young boys to remove their genitals, would I have been banned from schools? Definitely not. No. They would have said, no, you can say his name. You no would have problem. got an assembly. No how big I got, if I had a wig on and lipstick and I had been castrated medically, I would be allowed to talk to the young boys. But as soon as I say, you're supposed to grow up and get big and strong, and if your wife doesn't want a job, you need to pay for her. It's your job as a man. You better find some money. Then I'm the <laughs> public enemy number one. Garbage. Garbage. On that last point, you Garbage. don't say if a woman doesn't want to work, a man should take care of it. You say a woman shouldn't work. I say Correct. my woman won't work. Right. I'm talking about my personal experience. I said, any girlfriend of mine, because I'm an extremely fortunate 
financial position. I was before Romania took everything, of course. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. So because I am in my position, I would not my, want my woman to work. I think there's more important things she can do. If you have hundreds money. of millions of dollars, where you said you had a worth of 17 million. Where's no, I the, said they took 17 million. Years. So where's the rest? Oh, it's not Romania. Oh, they must have taken it. I think they have it. Or maybe I lost it. I think I lost it somewhere. Yeah, he you, lost you, it. You've never had hundreds of millions of dollars. Of course not. Of course yeah, not. Maybe. Of course not. You said they took no. all your assets. Exactly. Yeah, they, they have it all. Of course, they took everything. They have it all. watching this. Are they to assume that there are hundreds of millions more dollars they haven't got? We went over this before, Pierce. Stop trying to get the fucking guy's money taken away, bro. He is a rich dude. All rich dudes don't have all their money in the same spot. For this various reason. Stop trying to take the dude's money. Stop trying to find the hidden stash, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're they're watching this. That's right. They take absolutely everything. You have it all. All right. But again, is that all just the smoke and mirrors? Is that all just the the top G stuff that you play up to, which is that has no bearing on reality? I was the most Googled man on the planet. I was the most relevant man mm. amongst 18 to 35 year old males, which are the highest earning and spending people on the planet. Mm. Do you really think that I am not, I can't pay my bills, Pierce? Right now, yeah. Okay. Someone's paying them for you. Correct, you're right. Someone's paying them for me, you're right. My girl's got a job. She works at Starbucks. Mm. Exclusive <laughs> Andrew Tate's girl, Top G's girl works in Starbucks to pay the rent. I've been exposed. <laughs> All right. For a limited time, this right here, which is the Vanish holster, the most comfortable holster on the planet and one that... See, again, I don't know what to believe when you say stuff like that. Well, I'm telling you, my friend. That the remaining states I think you deployed all... deliberate smoke and mirrors because is this guy so retarded or what? Brand. Are the you that retarded, Pierce? All of my money and I'm just you know getting by. Mm -hmm. Like, is he pretending to be stupid? I'm sure that Pierce has enough money to also not have all his money in the same place. To also have a bunch of money under trust that aren't in your name. There's lots of ways to have money, and not have money. Come on, Pierce. Stop being stupid, bro. Do you worry about your impact on young men? I think that... Because, I I, like I said, I would be completely honest. I think a lot of what you say, they should be hearing. Yep. And I, I have tangible proof every day when I walk around yep. that they are listening to everything you say. Yep. But there is other stuff you say where I don't want my sons, especially in that impressionable late teenage, Correct. to be listening to that. Correct. And that's a very... And I don't want my daughter to grow up and think that actually her only success in life will come if she's at home as some kind of servant to her man. Well, that won't be her only success, but... It won't be her only success, but it's most likely the thing that's going to actually make her happy and fulfilled. So if you don't want her to be happy and fulfilled, tell her to go get a job. That's an actual, that's a very professional question, and I'll give a very professional answer. I have a massive responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. And I understand that young men do listen to everything I say. I do think I say good things, but you also made a very pertinent point there. You talked about the impressionable age of a teenager, and it's very easy for a teenager with their hormones and their lack of life experience to take the things I say and weaponize them and use them in the incorrect context. However, that is not my fault. You could argue that 16 to 17 year olds can look at anything on the internet and misunderstand it. You could argue that all of this transgender garbage and all of these rappers talking about killing each other and all these drill artists talking about stabbing their enemies mm. could be misunderstood by a 16 year old. I agree. Person. So oh, no, that's not that, my fault. However, on that, I totally agree. Okay, so I have a massive responsibility. And you are held to a different account, actually, to a lot of those rappers. Absolutely. Right? There's no question. I mean, the farce for me is when John Legend rewrote the lyrics to Baby, It's Cold Outside because apparently encouraged sexual assault, but wouldn't say a negative word about any of the disgustingly misogynist and, and actually very violent lyrics of his rap friends. Absolutely. That to me is total hypocrisy. And it is hypocr hypocritical. However, unlike all of these other people, I have taken into account my massive power and my massive responsibility. And I try to make sure that I use my words as carefully as possible so that they cannot be misconstrued or misunderstood. Can I make sure that no teenager on the planet who listens to me ever misunderstands me ever? No, I can't do that, but I'm doing my very best. What do I actually talk about? What do I actually say? I, what I do is I come along, and let me give you the broad overview of my message. You're a man, so your life sucks. It's always going to suck, and it's going to be pain. You're going to do nothing but suffer. You're going to suffer as a nobody, or you're going to suffer the pain it takes to become Actually, right. most men don't have that. But that you're going to suffer as a nobody, because trust me, nobody suffer. Or you're going to suffer the pain it takes to become great. Life is not supposed to be a happy 
picnic. You're supposed to get up, work hard, dedicate yourself, get strong, get rich, go through whatever it takes to become somebody of significance. That's my overall message. You don't have to and get, I believe you have it's to, a positive. You've got to get rich to be happy. No. Most of that, in fact, most of the super rich people I know in life are incredibly unhappy. Really? So you're selling a kind of false dream. Well, I don't A lot of rich people are miserable. Have you ever seen a rich person give their money away? And a lot of people away? who have very little money can be very happy. Have you ever seen a rich person give their money away? Yes, of course. Okay, do you give all your money away? Will that make you happier, Piers? I don't Do you want the Romanian state to take it all? I didn't smile that day. And let me tell you that the reason I tell about men to become financially successful is for two reasons. One, because you have a job as a man to protect and provide, and you can do neither of those things if you are broke. That's the first reason. And the second reason I actually preach to young men to become as financially successful as possible is a greater, broader reason. And I believe we've entered a very interesting stage in humanity where the matrix has finally cracked. Three or four years ago, there were certain narratives you could not talk against, but with Elon Musk owning X, and now we have Rumble, we have a lot more information on the internet, people are starting to tell the truth about many different subjects. There's a whole bunch of them we can name. And I like the idea of people who are free thinking with a free mind, who are say, not matrix controlled, yeah, hang on. making as much money as possible because it takes money to win wars and I want these people to be financially successful. Right. When That's why I tell all of my fans who believe in me to become as rich as possible because they understand that everything the new government does is lie to them. Right. And we need finance. You use the word truth there. I don't think it's necessarily that people want to promote truth. They want to promote their opinions. Often people's opinions on facts can be very different. People can take the same set of facts to different opinions. Doesn't mean it's the truth, right? Well, that's true. But I mean, I, I don't believe in this my truth crap, right? Neither, neither do I. But, but we... there are facts which have to be accepted. And you can have an opinion about them. You and I can disagree about all sorts of opinions, but actually not facts. Okay, but I can argue this point where the matrix comes out with a fact and all the opinions countering that fact are censored and they are destroyed, then that fact becomes de facto truth because it's the only version of reality which exists do you think, to be ingested by the mind. So you still need varying you, opinions on all public. Do all you think that what you, uh, let's, let's put it this way. Sure. You would have relationships with women and encourage them to take part in webcam sexual stuff. No. Well, no. actually, yes. Why no. are we going back to this? Because there's one question I want to ask you sure. about it, right? And both sides made a lot of money, sure. right? Okay. And in most cases, because they haven't complained in most cases, you would assume it was a mutually beneficial transactional relationship, right? I can assume that because thousands of women have been through this and most of them haven't come forward and complained about the way they were treated. None of them came forward and complained. But was it moral? Do you think what you've been making money from Park the illegality aspect to one side. Do you feel it was moral? Ten years ago, I helped obviously not promote their profiles on the internet. Correct. Ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Firstly, I have not been involved with it for seven years. It's not how I make money. I haven't touched it for a very long time. Seven years is a but long time. You made a lot time. of money from it. I made some money from it right. a long time how ago. How much? Some money. I can't even remember. Millions. Mm. Millions. Perhaps. Millions. So you made millions of pounds. A long time ago. Well, hang on. It's important. You made millions of pounds from sexual webcam activity where you and the woman doing the webcams would make money. You accept that? No. What I did is... Well, this is, what, this is how you made money. No. A long time ago, and I talked about this at length on many different podcasts, yeah, yeah. and I don't hide it. I said a long time ago, 10 years ago, I helped women with the tax side and the technical side and the promotion well, of their profiles. Well, they work for you. Or the promotion of their profiles on certain websites. And I said about this, and I said, I haven't been involved with it for seven years. The only reason this is even coming up again is because I'm monumentally famous, because nobody cares. We're in Bucharest. Well, no, it's Let not. Let me even the Pierce. It's We're not. in Bucharest, it... Romania. Do you understand that there is a video chat studio with mm. girls talking to men online right there, mm. outside that window? I'm sure. In fact, there's about 10 or 15,000 asking... women in this city who do that job the fact that you... now. And the fact that I had Andrew. some, I dipped my toe in it 10 years ago isn't even significant. I'm only asking if you think it's moral. Do I think it's moral? Because you speak in such a morally self-righteous way now. Do you think that that was moral? Well, no, I'm it's haram, bro. Use but your I'm favorite saying. words. Because you're now, you, you converted no, to I'm, Islam. Yeah, correct. You're a Muslim. Correct. They have, you know, a code of, of behavior. <laughs> Do you think that that fell short of I that have code? to answer as a professional. And as a professional, I would say, do, judging by my current code, no, I do not think that women being naked on the internet is moral. However, there is... Like, so you made money immorally. You can admit that. Yes. It's nuanced like all things, Piers. 
At the time, I was atheistic. I know that some of my girls talked men away from suicide. A lot of men are ridiculously lonely. Mm -hmm. I would also say a lot of the lessons I know about men and how they think and how lonely and sad they can be and how difficult life is as a man actually came from that era because I saw a lot of very successful men with a wife and with kids and with money mm -hmm. pouring their heart out to some 20-year-old they never sure. met about how sad they were. I learned a lot about the world, and I know that a lot of suicide was prevented, and I made a lot of women millionaires. But would I do it now? No. However, I'm in a very different situation now. I'm a different person. I'm religious. I'm also extremely financially successful. Please understand, Piers, I come from Marsh Farm Luton. I came from one of the worst areas inside of the UK. Mm. I could have stabbed someone. Every one of my friends were breaking into cars, breaking into houses. Most of my friends were in jail. What did I do? I promoted accounts on the internet. You didn't made sell, money. Didn't you sell crack. Didn't sell yeah. drugs, didn't rob anyone, didn't shoot anyone. And now, because I am successful, I'm going to be held to this moral standard by people who grew up in fancy homes with white picket fences and went to private schools. Well, no, actually, you... I am from Marsh no, Farm no, no, Luton, no. and the biggest crime I committed was completely legally promoting internet profiles. Right. There are people around me who did far actually, you're only going to be held... for far less. No, no, you're only going to be held to the standard of the religion you converted to. Which you've already when you take said, the Shahada, all on, your former sins are erased. Which you've already erased. said would look at that as immoral. When you take the Shahada, all of your former sins are erased. And I actually encourage you to find the light and convert to Islam. Andrew Tate, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I don't know why it ended abruptly like that, but from my understanding, that's only part one, so I'm not sure why they shook like it was the end of it. I heard about healthcare.gov and how easy it was to sign up. And with a new law, I was able to find of the political spectrum you fall on. When you observe a genocide in front of your very eyes, you should be disgusted. Which side is waging genocide? The Israelis are genociding the Palestinians, and you know it as well as everybody else does. I don't know does. that. Well, then it seems like your bosses are not allowing you to know it. What perhaps. do you think of, of what Hamas did on October the 7th? Why are you starting the story in the middle? I Pierce? didn't. I just asked you about the wider war. I'm now asking I can't you specifically about Hamas. I cannot professionally answer that question without talking about the context that led up to October 7th. Well, nothing, to my mind, justifies what happened on October the 7th. Nothing justifies what happened before October the 7th, Piers. Mm. This is the exact point. So you're talking to a man. I don't know what answer you expect from me, because mm. let's forget the fact that I'm a Muslim. You're talking to a man who is fighting oppression to the best of his ability because he believes that the people in charge of the world are enslaving us all to the point where I detriment my own life. I end up in a jail cell because I'm speaking against oppression. Then you're asking me what I would do if my family was you're blown not in a to jail. pieces. You're not in a jail. Hang on. You're asking you're me not... what I would do if another government Andrew, came along and blew my family to pieces? You weren't put in a jail cell because of any oppression. Absolutely, I was. No, you weren't. Of course You I were was. put in jail cell because you've been accused of serious sexual crimes. I would crimes. not have been accused if I was not monumentally successful in speaking the truth. Let me ask you again. It's a simple question. Some people can answer it straight away, including pro-Palestinians people I've had on my program. Many are very quick to say, absolutely. Do you believe Hamas are a terror organization? And that's a very interesting question, but I think you're peddling asininities. Well, just answer the question. Can somebody do me a favor? Google asininities and find out if it's a I word. know what it means. If it's not, make sure it's added to Webster on Top G's orders. Okay. Just, are they a terror group? You're peddling asininities because I'll tell you why. Please. Asininities. No, not. Of course you it's are. It's a simple question. That's like me asking. I'll tell you why I asked, because the let, UK, let, where you were born, prescribes Hamas as a terror They also prescribe me as dangerous to children in schools. Let me explain something to you, Pierce. You're not if prescribed sit, as that. If I were to sit here and say, is stealing wrong? And you'd say yes, and i go, ah, but what if the person stealing is trying to feed their family and if they don't, their family are going to die? Is it still wrong? You're trying to take a so very equating... nuanced and complicated argument no. and reduce it down to no, one not. sentence, no, which not. is failure. You're trying to equate stealing with a mob of terrorists breaking over a border going to peaceful... Is that what Israel did? Wait a minute. A mob of terrorists Wait a minute. over a border Let me finish. And, and killing people. Is that going, what Israel did? Going through a border on October the 7th. Oh, October the 7th. Uh, massacring young people at a festival, massacring families in their homes in a kibbutz, setting fire to them, cutting their heads off, killing babies. Oh, killing it was 40 the most, babies. That was true. Well, fine. Were the babies vaccinated? Why are you being flippant? I'm not being Where flippant. The the point I, am I find that funny. No, but the point I'm making is that the media lies, firstly. No, no. Secondly, I can secondly. ask you. We can ask. I can ask you about different things at the same time, right? Sure. So I'm asking you, first of all, specifically, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Sure. I'll answer the question professionally. I do not condone the loss of human life on either side. I think anybody doing anything which directly damages civilians is disgusting and abhorrent. However, I would be an amateur if I could not sit and pretend I do not understand the motivations behind either side 
This is not even me taking a side. I understand why Israel is doing what it's doing. I understand why Palestine is doing what it's doing. However, I still call the Israeli actions absolutely abhorrent and genocidal. Okay, we're going to come to Israel's actions, I promise you. We will ask that question specifically. But in terms of what Hamas did on October the 7th, do you accept that was an act of terrorism? It's an interesting question because once it's not again, really. It is. It's no, a it very truly straightforward is because question. you're the person who would have called Nelson Mandela a terrorist while he was still in jail. And one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. I wouldn't for have me to answer that. the question. Yes, you would have. For the for me to answer the question, I have to be very professional, Pierce. For me to sit on the outside in Romania with no personal involvement in Israel Palestine, it's easy for me to say yes, it was an act of terror. However, if I was in Gaza, if I was in an open air prison, if my family had been annihilated by bombs from mm. the sky, mm. if everybody I knew Knew had suffered the loss of a loved one, if I had no chance of any kind of freedom or democracy or standard of life, would I believe it was an act of terror or would I believe it's an act of resistance against oppression? You have to be very careful how you answer these so questions. So what do you think? I think I understand what happens when you take people and put them in such an inhumane condition. So For anybody you're... to sit and say that you're going to take people and put them in absolutely inhumane conditions mm. and give them no standard of life and they're not allowed to ever fight back or they are But I can agree with you. Anyone who does well, wait a minute. that is an amateur. I can agree with you that the plight of the Palestinians for many decades has been absolutely shameful. So what did we think no, was going to happen, wait, Pierce? No, nothing justifies what happened on October the 7th. So what are they nothing, supposed to do? Nothing. So what are they supposed to that do? That was an act of medieval barbaric terrorism. Nothing justifies did it. Did they suffer and your acts attempt of to, medieval... Your, did they suffer your attempt acts of medieval barbaric... Did they suffer acts of medieval barbaric terrorism before that date? Yes. And it's unfortunately an eye for an eye in this world. Tell me, I'm not condoning. Give me, I'm being a professional and answering give to me you one why example, it happened. Give me one example of where Israel, without any provocation, <laughs> went into, well, no, wait, a specific question, went into Gaza and massacred 1,500 innocent people, cutting their heads off, taping and boasting about what they'd done back to their families in Israel, kidnapping Holocaust survivors, Bringing them, they wouldn't, of course, have done that. And they could kidnapping old grandmothers and bringing them back to Israel, kidnapping babies, kidnapping children. When has Israel actually gone in and done something of the scale of October the seventh? There's literally endless examples of that. Give me one. In 2014, they were bombing civilians. Give me, no, and you know what, Pierce? Let me tell you something. I'm not talking I'm not about. No, no, I'm not talking about. Well, they were let categorized me. as retaliation for rocket strikes, and there's an arguable point. As there is, for example, I'm vehemently against the expansion of the settlements on the West Bank. I think there are legitimate questions about the proportionality of Israel's response here. Yeah, legitimate but in terms, questions. But in terms of what Hamas perpetrated on October the 7th, there is no, no, no instance of Israel doing that to the people of Gaza. The re first and you have first. to accept that. No. If you don't accept that, you're either deluded or you're deliberately not wanting to say the obvious, which is that was an act of terrorism, because you're concerned about upsetting people in Palestine. Is that, is that the case? Let me go back to my first point when I said you're peddling asininities. The reason I said that is because to look at a situation, no matter how <laughs> heinous, and to ignore all of the context and pretend that you do not understand why said situation happened, is in, Nothing is justifies asinine. terrorism on that scale. Nothing. Is, is asinine. No, no, it's not. It Hamas, is. Hamas, because it's not you, about justification, Let Pierce. me tell you why. Pierce, it's not about justification. Let me tell you, no, it's no. about understanding the realities let of me, the world. Let me tell you the reality of the world. Hamas came to power in 2005. Hamas's initial founding charter made it clear that they are for the eradication of Israel. And on October the 7th, they prove what that means is they will kill every Jew they can get their hands on. They are an existential threat to people in Israel and to Jewish people. And that is, I'm afraid, the purest personification of a terror group. I also think by doing what they did, as they have done since 2005, they weren't representing innocent Palestinian people in Gaza. Who are suffering they, now. they knew, yes, but Hamas knew when they did what they did, that Israel would respond the way they did, and that thousands of innocent Palestinians would get killed. They knew that, and they still did it. So my question for you is, why can't you, which is my position on this, is very straightforward. What Hamas did was an act of terror, an absolutely despicable act of terror and should be called exactly what it is. And they are now demonstrably a terrorist group. That is why they were rightly prescribed that by the UK and America and other countries. And to try and pretend they're not makes you sound like Jeremy Corbyn. And I can't think of a worse insult to throw at you, right? So <laughs> I don't so, think me and Corbyn so, agree on that. But I also think there are legitimate questions to come about the way Israel's responded. We can come to that. But I just want to ask you one more time. Is what Hamas did on October the 7th an act of terrorism? I think, Pierce, it is peddling asininities for you 
to pretend that enslaving people... So you sound people... like Jeremy Corbyn. Now. No, let me answer the question. Fifteen times he refused to answer the let question. Let me answer the question. You're now up I'm to about... I'm refusing. You're now if about you three or four. If you lie... Are they a terror group or not? They're one team's freedom fighter, and they're deemed a terrorist What group. do you think? I think that if you lock people in an open-air prison and steal their land, they're going to retaliate. So they're not a terror group? I think they're going to retaliate. They're not a terror group? One team's terrorist is another Okay, we're now up to about fighter. eight. Are they a terror group? And also, another thing I want to make clear to you, Pierce. Only Jeremy Corbyn has done this. Done what? Refused to answer the question. I think that what they are doing is seemly deemed an act of terror by the people that the terror... They don't use Weasley words. They're not Weasley. Of course the Israelis think they're a terror group, and of course some, of course, the Palestinians Actually, think they're freedom fighters. Most it's of stupid the, that you're asking the question. Most of the civilized clear. world thinks they're a terror group who committed an act of terrorism. It's not difficult. What I, they did was an act of terrorism. And I think that if Israel continues to, uh, con, to conduct to, acts of terrorism going to come, on the Palestinian people, they're going to do nothing I'm but strengthen come, the reaction. I'm going to, well, that's a different conversation I'm about to have with you about Israel's response. But before I get there, one more time, is Hamas a terror group who committed an act of terrorism. I think that when you lock people in an open- I think Tate's taking his conversion to Islam a little too serious if you can't admit Hamas as a terrorist group. Now you can have the whole debate on do Palestinians have a right to be mad at Israel, yada, 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 but Hamas is a terrorist group, bro. They're funded by Iran, Iran Iranians. I mean, they're a terrorist group, bro. Open air prison, you're gonna have okay, to you're not gonna retaliation. Answer. You're not no, gonna because answer. I have to, there's people who are, firstly, first things I wanna say, Pierce. You don't mind me saying, I think it's spineless. Sure. I do. That's fine. You sound like Jeremy Corbyn. Well, that, that is an Did insult. you see my interview with him? No. <laughs> right, that is 15 an 15 times last week, I asked him the same question. 15 times he prevaricated and wouldn't answer. Eventually, when someone does that enough times, you know what they really think. Okay. You don't think they're well, a terrorist. Well, group. Let me answer. You don't think they're a terrorist. group. No, what I think is this. On certain Because I'd be really curious what you think an act of terror is if it's well, not massacring 1,500 innocent people, it's not including that. Holocaust survivors, Pierce. kidnapping babies, Pierce. decapitating Pierce. people, cutting their limbs Pierce. off, raping women. Yeah, talk about missing limbs. We're going to talk about that when we talk about what we are, done. But so when we get there, it'll be in the context of you not admitting that was an act of terror. Well, let me answer the question for the final time. I am a realist. And as a realist, sometimes you do not come to the conclusion of labeling good guys and bad guys. The world is not black and white. Oh, oh no, Hamas are no, bad guys. No. The world is not black and white. The world is actually very gray. Mm. Anybody who sits and thinks there's nothing clearly gray a good about guy, what, there's nothing there's gray about what Hamas did. And clearly a bad guy does not understand how the world works. And as a realist, what you do is you look at scenarios and you understand why they happen, how unfortunate they are, how unfortunate the loss of human life is, mm. how civilians die on both sides, how innocents are dying in a okay. chess game played by the elites on both sides. Okay. Both sides, you have innocent people who didn't even vote for the person making the decisions who are ensuring their death, signing their death warrants. It's unfortunate on both sides. Okay. But listen, sir, you would not advocate Russia doing any of the things to Ukraine that Israel is doing to to to, to Palestine. You would not Sorry, sit Russia here. Russia has been doing exactly that. Russia has Ukraine. not done a fraction Russia of the things illegally, to Ukraine Russia, that Israel has done Russia, to Palestine. Russia illegally invaded a sovereign democratic country and has committed a barbaric rampage, trying to seize as much of Ukraine as it can, bombing maternity hospitals, Let me ask killing you a innocent women Let me and ask children. You a question. Right? Don't even try and have some kind of no, no. This is equivocation of this. I will. A Hamas rocket, a tiny Hamas rocket that can make a pothole in the road, mm. and then they get hit back with cruise missiles. Let me ask you a question. Ukraine sent a drone and it hit the Kremlin. A drone attack, it did nothing, it damaged some, some shingles. Mm. If, if Russia decided to then respond with a missile attack on a hospital and annihilate 800 people, it has been. do you think that would be allowed? That's exactly what it has been. Would you advocate have you for seen, that? Have you seen would the, you support that Have reaction? you seen the state of Mariupol, would which you, they leveled to the ground? The Ukrainians did level it, the Russia, correct. The, no, the Russians 2014. Did. The yeah, Russians the leveled Mariupol. And, and my question to you is, would you advocate those reactions? Let me ask you another question, Pierce. No, this is a genuine okay. question. Let me ask you a question, because I want to understand no, your point of view. It's actually my you, interview of you. Yeah, but, but, but you tried to understand mine. I just want to understand your point of view. Mm -hmm. if, if I believed, or if Israel believed, that one of the people in your house was mm -hmm. a terrorist and decided to destroy your entire house and kill your entire family, mm -hmm. would you sit and say, well, maybe there was a terrorist inside. I accept that. Or would you be enraged? 
Genuine question. I don't think you can take an individual person's response. Well, it's a bunch of individual as, people in Gaza. A, yeah, They're sure. people, individuals with right, thoughts and dreams come. and aspirations Fine. which are being annihilated. 15-year-old girls without legs because of cruise missiles. Let's come to they that. are individual people. Let's They're not cattle, Peter. Let's come to They're that. They're people. Right, and so were the people in Israel on October the 7th. And that's why it's so heinous, which right. is my exact point. But not heinous enough to reach your bar of terrorism. Let's it's move not about let's reaching move, bar of terrorism. Move, no, it's understanding why not, things happen. By not saying it, you've made your position clear. Just just as Jeremy Corbyn did. And to pretend you're any different is ridiculous. Let's move on to Israel's response, because there are legitimate questions about this. Hamas embeds itself, 35, 40,000 terrorists, in my estimation, you can call them whatever you like. Um, and they're embedded amongst the civilian population, predominantly in northern Gaza. They, we know from intelligence over the last intelligence. 20 years, intelligence. which you won't believe because the matrix has made it all up. Correct. We know from intelligence that it's historically correct. Hamas likes to embed itself, particularly around things like schools and hospitals yes. and mosques, okay. because that makes it more difficult yeah. if uh, the Israelis attack. Yeah. Now, Israel has killed nearly 12,000 people <laughs> in its response, right? There are many people around the world demanding a ceasefire who think that is a ridiculously disproportionate it's response. Genocide. To what happened? Well, it was genocide. They would want to kill everyone in Palestine. They don't. They just want to drive them all out. Whereas Hamas do want to kill every Jew. That BMC, is actually what genocide. What's good, bro? You know what's actually interesting? Because you've spoken about this subject with people more who actually understand the conflict better than I do. Mm. Muhammad Hijab understands it better. Loki understands it better. I'm talking from a very general humanistic perspective. Because I don't understand that absolute intricacies like they do. Do you know what genocide means? Of course All I, is right. well. Genocide means you want to eradicate an entire people based on race or ethnicity. Israel clearly doesn't want to do that to the Palestinian oh, clearly, people. Clearly not. If it did, it wouldn't tell a million of them, as it turned out, who moved south. Now, there are arguments about whether... To they... attack them as they moved. Well, some people got hit as they moved. Oh, some people got hit. Yes. Some people got hit. You know what, You know Andrew? what happens? You know what, Andrew? Wait till it's your son, son. You know what, I... Wait till it's your I son. I agree. And you know what, Andrew? War is horrific. It's horrific. The question is, is it a just war for Israel to go after Hamas? And if it is, and you believe as I do, they, Hamas has to be got rid of, how do you do that? It's if very... you don't do it the way Israel is, is doing it, how do you get rid of that terror group? It's... Now, you won't agree with anything they're doing. Because how you do you kill the terrorists? Terror no, the, the reason question. I won't agree with them is because I'm a human, Pierce. And please let me answer this without being interrupted. Mm. You didn't answer my earlier question for a reason because you knew that you couldn't answer it without which, which proving question? my point. The question about the fact that if they decided to cruise missile your house because mm. they thought somebody inside was a terrorist, you would not accept the loss of your family that you have raised. You would not accept that. Of course that. I wouldn't. Okay, absolutely. So let me answer this as a professional. What's funny is I'm a humanist. A like I said, a professional what, by the way? A prof the professional. What Please does that let me mean? answer. Let me answer. What are you? At? What are you I'm speaking? A, you I'm say a you're speaking to professional. And I'm talking about this from a humanistic perspective, mm. right? And like I said, you've talked about pe you've talked to people more knowledgeable than me on the details of the subject. Right. Listen to me very carefully. I thought we lived in a democratic society. You just had 35,000 Hamas terrorists, and this is the thing that's most upsetting to mm. me. This is what genuinely upsets me. Israel intelligence will say a guy's a Hamas terrorist. Has that guy gone to a court of law? Has there been a democratic process? Has he been proven to be a terrorist? No. They've just decided from their intelligence that couldn't see an invasion coming from hundreds of miles away. So this intelligence is actually no. It's not. It's no, not no, great. No. So they've decided no, no. this person might be an intelligence without court case, without any kind of democratic process, and because of that, they've decided to annihilate civilians along with him, and it's all just collateral damage, and nobody should care. That is not a humanistic perspective. And that is disgusting. And any person in the West who is advocating for that is a hypocrite. And because if it was turned on them, right. if, it, if the American government said, we think the person in your shopping mall, one of the people you were shopping alongside in the mall, might have committed a crime. We didn't take them to court. We think they might have. So we killed your whole family. Right. Get over it. So the last is a, time. Is a clown and a hypocrite. So the last time. What do you expect the full last, grown men to I'm do? I'm about to respond. What do you expect full grown men to do when you kill all of their families and leave them locked in an Open Let me prison. respond. The last time that Jewish people faced an existential threat was in World War II. And the Nazis, who wanted to take over the world and kill every Jewish person, the Nazis were ultimately defeated by Winston Churchill leading the Allies. And Winston Churchill, in the process of defeating the Nazis, killed a lot of German innocent civilians in the process. Do you think that was justified? It's funny how he gives Churchill credit for winning the war. Yeah, it was Churchill, bro. Not America. You got it, bro. Let me ask a question. Was it? Well, no, I asked the questions. Was it justified? Sir, I believe, and let me just get this right in my head. Yeah, think about it. No, I'm, I don't need to think about your question. I believe that the Nazis 
which were obviously heinous. I'm not advocating anything they did. It was disgusting, the Nazis. I'm glad we beat them. I'm actually a huge well, they fan. Were they Yeah, they were. Right. So I believe that they so were... So when you massacre Jewish people, you're terrorists. When you Except when you do it in Israel. When you try and conduct genocide on a populace because you don't want them on land you say is yours, mm. then you are terrorists. It's exactly what Hamas did on October exactly the 7th. Exactly what Israel had did before that. So you've literally just described what Hamas do. You just described what Israel do. Mm. They're trying to genocide the Palestinians as we speak. And this is the exact point. So, to so here, Israel... No, but to see your... Well, hang on, so you think Israel are terrorists? I think that what they're doing now is disproportionate and genocidal. Is it terrorism? It's genocidal, so I guess that makes it terrorism. It's right. genocidal. So they're terrorists for responding to an act of terror, but the people who committed the act of terror are not terrorists. The way in which they're responding... You see the problem in that argument? No. I really? I, Pierce, what they are doing Slaughtering now... Slaughtering 1,500 people in the way they did it is not an act of terror by terrorists, but a response from the people who are on the receiving end rather like the response did from the Allies 12, did you say in World War II people? to what the Nazis did, that apparently is the only act of terrorism. Didn't you say 12,000 people the Israelis have killed thus far? Yes. I saw a video of a 15-year-old girl with no legs begging to die. Yeah. She was begging to die saying, I have no future because my parents are gone or my legs are gone. It's I horrific. have no future. No, but you say that, right? You talk about numbers and statistics and you say a few people got caught. You don't think of Gazans and you don't think of as Muslims and Palestinians as individual people. Oh, yes, I do. No, you don't. Because oh, if you I did, do. If you oh, did, I do. If you did, you oh, no, would not be happy with what's Don't you dare here. say that about me. Well, okay, but don't no, group no, no. them together in numbers. No, no. They're I've not spoke, numbers. I've spoken people. for many years about the plight of the Palestinian people. I think it's outrageous that Israel has any control over their ability to function with water, with fuel, with uh, other energy, and so on, and okay, food. And that's so on. interesting. It so is if wrong. you were in Gaza as a Gazaian male yep. of masculine fighting yep. age, and you believed the things you currently believe, yep. what would you do about it? I'm just asking. You know what? Nothing justifies the terrorism we I saw never said you'd be a terrorist. I'm asking what you do. No, no. I understand why people in Palestine feel oppressed. I understand why they want freedom. I understand why they want the same rights as the people in Israel. Then here's a perfect- On that, the, on that okay. we agree. Absolutely, but nothing, we agree. But nothing, nothing justifies what happened in October Well, here's where, we, here's where we disagree, Piers, because as a professional, when we both agree on the point that the people inside of Gaza are being oppressed mm. and that their life is being detrimented yep. and that they have no way of getting out, yes. we as a professional- And I, I do agree with that. I understand pressure cookers explode. Mm. You're pretending they shouldn't. You're saying that they should never explode. Nothing bad should ever happen. Saying nothing justifies just, terrorism. We should just be allowed to subjugate them no, for no. endless years Here's and my... nothing happens. No. And I'm a realist to understand that pressure cookers explode. No, you're not. And that's what happened. No, you're not. We need a solution to the problem or Actually, it will continue to happen. You're not a realist because actually you are not accepting that what they did on October the 7th was an act of terrorism by terrorists. You won't accept that. You think actually they're freedom fighters doing some kind of resistance. And I say that is ridiculous and shameful. That's the difference between us. I understand that pressure cookers explode, Piers. Well, technically they are freedom fighters that are using terrorism to fight for their freedom. So you're both right. Right. So you think it's perfectly reasonable what happened there? I don't think it's reasonable. I think it's, I think it's a shame. Natural consequence. I think it's a shame. Mm. A shame, that's it. I think, I think it's a shame that we're living in the world now where people are reduced to basically suicide, mm. to try and fight for freedom for their families if they have one left. Mm. Because they all committed suicide, those men who did that. Well, the Hamas... They didn't, have a, they didn't have a chance of survival. I think when you... Well, that's, oppress, because, they, that's because they believe that they're marching themselves and no, going to a better life. because when you oppress people to the point where their family's dead and they have nothing to live for. Mm. So and you, I think that's a shame. So you, do you support Islamic fundamentalism? Absolutely not. Mm. Do you support an Islamist ideology? Absolutely not. Right. What I support... So why do you support Hamas? I support justice in the universe. you support Hamas? I support justice in the universe. Do you support Hamas? No. You don't? I, well, I don't know the ins and outs of Hamas's creed. I have to be very honest. Well, you know what they did in October the 7th. Do you I, support I, them? I understand why that happened. And right. I'm saying it's a sh Bro, you're really going to know you don't know the Hamas creed, which is kill all Jews? It's like a three-slot creed. I think kill Jews is two of the three slots, bro. Shame. But you won't denounce them. I say it's a shame. Will you condemn them? I'm, I, I can't sit here and condemn the obvious wow. outcome of, of wow. consequence. Really? How can I, I condemn? You can't condemn Hamas for what they did. Well, we know what's going to happen. And we need a solution. You're here. very quick to condemn Israel's response, but you won't condemn the terror attack which prompted it. No, I'll tell you why. Even though Hamas knew by doing what they were doing, that would be the response. Do you think they knew that? Of course they knew that. You think they knew the Israelis? They did it quite deliberately. You know why? Because they were 
funded and supported by Iran. They didn't like the fact that Israel was normalizing relations with a bunch of Arab countries, from the UAE to Bahrain to Morocco, and then coming down the line was going to be Saudi Arabia. That was a threat to the Iran view of what should be happening in that region. Iran are the ones who support and fund and arm Hamas, and they uh, clearly, in my estimation, it hasn't been properly established yet, but clearly Hamas couldn't have done this on their own. They'd done it with support from Iran, and they've gone in and committed an act of such heinous atrocity that they knew what the response would be. And that means that they sentenced in that moment, not just 1,500 people in Israel to death in the most appalling ma manner possible, but they also sentenced to death thousands and thousands of innocent Palestinians, including many innocent children, because half the population are children, and Hamas knew that was what was going to happen. Do you, so my question is, do you how agree? can anyone think Pierce. that Hamas is a force for good I for the Palestinian people? Good. They I are a force for good. I said they're unfortunate. No, I didn't say they're a force for good. I said it's a pressure cooker and it's a shame. But you won't even condemn let me, ask, let me ask the question. Do you think if we gave the Palestinian people basic human rights that Hamas would find it more difficult to recruit new soldiers? After enduring war and persecution, millions of refugees and displaced families are facing harsh winter weather. Uh, I, yeah, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no to that question, Andrew Tate, because I don't think Hamas is having an issue recruiting. I don't think they have recruitment issues. Uh, look, I think probably the, I think probably if we treat them like humans, I think, this I, won't happen. I think the so we agree and let's move on. I think there's a real danger in the scale of Israel's response that you radicalize a whole new generation Agreed. of Palestinians. I think that's a real danger. So and perhaps, I, and so by the way, I've said that. We can agree on so that. So perhaps it was Israel's actions before October 7th that radicalized the soldiers who invaded. So you agree with me. So let's move no, on. No, I don't. It's, no, nothing just justifies did. nothing justifies what you they just did. did. Let just me did. ask you about the reaction that you've had from uh, certain people who I think at one stage uh, you had a, a, a good relationship with. Sure. One is um, Jordan Peterson, yeah. and the other one, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Let's talk about Jordan first. Sure. You, you've had a bit of a to and fro with him, but what is your view of him? I think Jordan and I actually agree on many issues. I think the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I think we have a lot more in common than we have that we disagree on. We have different views of the world on certain things. I think we approach him from different places. He's far more in his mind, whereas I live in more in a physical realm than he does. I have nothing against Jordan. I don't dislike him. I do find it, and I must be honest, a bit disingenuous and hypocritical that he speaks mental strength and then ends up addicted to an antidepressant. I don't think you should ever take antidepressants ever. I've been through worse than what he's been through, and I didn't take a single drug. However, I have nothing against the guy. He says very intelligent things, and I'd be interested to argue with him or discuss or debate with him, but I think we'd actually agree on most points, to be honest with you. I don't think we... I mean, he may be unhappy with somehow how I've lived my life and some things I've done, but we've already discussed the fact that I come from the lowest income area of the UK and most people around me were selling drugs, so at least I didn't do that. So I'm not gonna allow somebody who's a professor in a university who's had an easy life come along and tell me how people from the streets should survive. You have to find a way out. Let's get rich or die trying. But I have nothing against the guy. I just think that he's been a bit hypocritical and then, truthfully, the only time I've been genuinely a bit appalled by any of his actions was the tweet he made on Israel-Palestine when he said, give them hell. I know that's an easy thing to say, and it's an expression that people use, and they throw it around flippantly. But I think when you actually wish hell upon other human beings, I think it's a disgusting thing to do, because hell is that 15-year-old girl with no legs, and her parents were dead. Well, hell and when is you see her crying her eyes out, begging to die, mm. that is hell. And I don't think you should genuinely wish hell on anyone, Israel or Palestinian, either anyone. I'm a humanist. I don't want anybody to die. Well, he did, he and did, when he was wishing hell on an entire he did, population... He did express regret for the way he phrased it. And that he tweet. should, and because he it's disgusting. 20... I've not wished hell on the Israelis. Mm. I've not wished hell on the Israeli state. I don't want any Israeli civilian to go through with that 15-year-old Palestinian girl's going through. Not a single one. He said about you, Jordan Peterson, I'm not particularly happy to be grouped with Andrew Tate. I think there are some elements about what he does that are quite reprehensible. I'm sure he has. I'm not, I don't know everything he says, and he may disagree with some of my point of view. As I said, I have nothing against him. I don't think anything he says is particularly wrong. I think that he's hypocritical because of the antidepressant problem, and I think that the fact he wishes hell on other humans because he gets emotionally involved in a conflict, which within two minutes of it sparking off, he's wishing genocide. Mm. I think that says a lot about his personality. But overall, when he speaks at length, a lot of the things he says are pretty well thought through and pretty constructive. Let me I have nothing against the guy. Let me turn to Ben Shapiro. He said, let me assure you, as someone who's not pimped women and bragged about it, the morality requires that those who rape women and kidnap women must be eradicated, not negotiated with. He says, on my show, I won't be lectured on morality and toughness 
by Andrew Tate. His great idea of toughness and morality is pimping women and bragging about it on air, and then trying to quasi walk it back while simultaneously maintaining many of the same positions and flexing his biceps. Listen, everyone should be able to tweet whatever it is they want. I'm more for an open discourse, even with people who I think are dead wrong on a lot of issues. But Andrew Tate is dead wrong on a lot of these issues. And the particularly ridiculous posturing about being a, yes, you're very tough when you want people to make peace with terrorists who just murdered their children, very, very tough. What do you say to that? So Ben is a warmonger. Ben has been wrong on basically every single issue you can name. He was with you with the vaccine and, and every other war. Ben is always calling for other people's young men to go and die in some war. He seems to love it. I don't know if he has short man syndrome, but he's always behind his desk calling about how important it is that big, strong men like me go and die. And the reason he tweeted that and said that is because when Hamas and Israel, the very early in the conflict, I think it was three days in, were discussing possible peace talks, he tweeted, no, absolutely not, fuck them, kill them all. And I said, I said, Ben, as a man who's done his own fighting, because I've had a life of pain and violence, listen to me. Peace is always worth a conversation. What I said is that we should always be prepared to at least discuss peace. He, because he's a warmonger, said, no, peace is not worth a conversation. You're this, you're that, da-da. Because he's always sitting behind his desk. He must have a booster chair, and he's always running his mouth trying to invoke violence and call for war. And I find it kind of hypocritical because a man who's so small he would die if he was slapped on the street, sitting behind a desk and screaming for other people to be annihilated, I think is kind of, it's worse than I actually think, I believe- It's insane. I believe if he was sitting here listening to this, he would say that what he's screaming for is for Jewish people in Israel to defend themselves. And all he's a Jewish ben man. All does is call for war. And I agree. Defending yourself. That's not all he does. That's all he does. It's and calling all. for war and call and defending yourself is very different than genocide. And Ben, like I said, overall, most of Ben's worldviews and mine probably align. We don't align on the religious sect. We don't rely on the religious points. Fine. But our overall worldviews about how society should function probably align on many of the key issues. I'm not. I don't have a beef with Ben, and I don't watch his show, and I have no idea what he talks about a lot of the time. But what I do know is every time I turn it on, he's calling for someone else's son to go and die in a ditch somewhere for his interests. And I don't like people who are not advocates for peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, said Candace, who is far more intelligent than Ben will ever be. And she is completely right. He replied that rhetoric, starting an argument with me, when I said, we should talk about peace. I say we should talk about peace. He calls for the death of civilians, and somehow we're asking why my point of view is seen as abstract. It's insane. Why can't we all just sit down and say the fighting must end? Why can't we do that? Why can't we sit and say, nobody should be dying. Let's stop using the most advanced military weaponry on the planet to blow the limbs off children. Why can't we say that without being deemed some why kind you, of terrorist why sympathizer ca- why, or anti-Semite? Why do it's you, insanity. Uh, Trump came along and didn't start a single war. He's the only one who didn't. And they're going to come along him and say, make him a bad guy. When a new president comes in, it's just endless war and death and killing. Mm-hmm. Have you seen a dead body, Piers? Have you seen people lose a fucking limb? It's disgusting. I know what's happening over there. I've Have seen, you seen that? I don't need to tell you about the, the parts of my history that I'm not prepared to share, Piers. You've but seen, let me you've tell, seen people... I said it to Ben. I said people who have done their own fighting and seen their own violence and have seen people bleed out in the street from a stab wound are not going to be so, so smart and so quick to sit behind a desk and call for the death of innocent people. It's disgusting what's happening. I don't want anyone to die on either side. And when I come along as a peacemaker and say, this is insane, because he's a warmonger, because he has chosen uh, blinkers and sees one side of the argument and refuses to accept the humanity of Palestinians, he says, I'm a bad person for calling for peace. Well, you know why? Because he'll probably listen to this interview and say, this guy can't even describe Hamas as terrorists. If Ben Shapiro thinks bad of And if you don't think what happened to the people in Israel on October the 7th is an act of terrorism... Did I not just say, then you are, I want all people then you to are just crime. you are just as partisan to one side as you believe Ben Shapiro Did is I to the other. Did I not just say I want all people to start dying? Stop dying. Pierce, don't interrupt this. It's two sentences. I want all people to stop dying. However, I understand what is going to happen when you create a pressure cooker. That is, my, that is my answer, and it's extremely professional. I don't want anyone to die, and because I don't want anyone to die, because I'm a peacemaker, because I'm a humanist, I understand you cannot lock people in an open-air prison for an undetermined period of time without provoking terrorism. So out of interest, what would you have done if you'd been Israel after October the 7th? That's a really interesting question, and I think there's people who are more qualified than me to answer. Given that Hamas last week said, we're going to try and do the same thing again and yeah. again and again, what would you do to defend the people of Israel? Good question. They have the Iron Dome, which is largely effective. 
I think that their border security is usually effective. It's very interesting that it wasn't on the So you state. would say they would do nothing then, other than tighten up security? I think if I was truthfully, I'll answer the question. If I was truthfully in charge of Israel, I would have found out how our border was penetrated. Mm -hmm. I would have made sure that was impossible to do. Mm -hmm. I would have had large con conversations and discourse during that period, which would probably take weeks to ensure that my border was impenetrable because we were at no genuine threat of a repeat attack. And then I would make it clear that there will be some repercussion unless unless there would be some repercussion unless we can come to peace terms. I don't think the well, Hamas doesn't want peace. Of course not. But I'm saying oh, that's, that's their fine. stated position. Of course, of course. So there's okay, a peace with Hamas. what I do. I would have found out first things first. I'm a man. So first things first, you fix the problem. Okay. Our borders. Been penetrated. How do we make sure that doesn't happen again? Sure, How course. did it happen? Internal investigation. Let's make sure the border is secure. Now our civilians are safe. Our civilians are safe, which buys us time. Let's have a conversation to see if we can actually reason with a mask. If we can't, then there might be a, uh, there might be then, some military then what? intervention. Then what? But there certainly wouldn't be bombing hospitals, crews missiling refugee camps. There wouldn't be any of the things that's going on now. Absolutely you not. You wouldn't try and this, attack the people that No, because this is a rushed and emotional response. Hmm. And that's what I would have prevented. I would have made sure as a man I didn't make a rushed and emotional response. So you'd be, more, you'd be more like Neville Chamberlain trying to do peace with the Nazis and Winston Churchill trying to kill them. Well, yeah, that's an interesting question. You're an appeaser, not a warrior. Well, I still think I'm a warrior, but I think that when you're a warrior, you have to be very capable and... Oh, but that's what Neville Chamberlain's view was. We, we should do peace with... Oh, my bad. I was muted for the last comment. Thanks, Amik. Um, I was just saying, I agree with Andrew Tate on a lot of stuff, but his, uh, his take on Hamas is kind of fucking retarded. It's kind of retarded. He's like, uh, secure the borders, keep the Iron Dome, and then pursue peace talks. They don't want peace. Their charter is kill all Jews. There's no peace talks. That's, that's not a thing. You have to be very understanding of your power and you have to use it responsibly, responsibly. Mm -hmm. And just like I said earlier, when I'm trying to be responsible about what I say to the young men of the world, I would understand as Israel, I must be responsible with my massive military might to make sure I don't kill civilians. And I would sit and try and make a measured response and I'd be a professional and I would consider them human beings and I would secure my border and try and come up with a plan better than, oh no, I'm mad, I'm emotional now, let's go kill everyone. I think that's the wrong response, correct. I don't think, I don't think that's the right thing to do. That's We've not the response they had, talking. though. Um, you're going to find out. I hate when people put me in the position of defending Israel because I don't want to be defending Israel. That's that's not my position at all. But come on, Tate, you're 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 acting a little retarded. If they got emotional and just started throwing bombs, then there would be a shitload more than twelve thousand people dead. They told everybody to evacuate. They still did their door knocks. They st still did this weird way they wage war. And yes, a lot of civilians still die. That's kind of war. But to say that Hamas isn't a terrorist is kind of fucking retarded. At some stage today or in the next few days, whether you're going to get your possessions back, that will either happen or not happen. But then there's likely to be a trial. Yeah. And that will determine how you spend the next 10 years of your life, almost certainly, which is a sobering thought for anyone. Yeah. When you look back on the whole arc mm -hmm. of the last few years, you know, you've expressed some regret because of your turning to Islam, your change in, in your philosophy uh, from a religious perspective. You've acknowledged that some of the stuff you used to do was immoral. D do you look at the journey you've gone on here and think that in a way, notwithstanding the matrix and everything else, that maybe you yourself could have done things differently to oh, avoid absolutely. being in this position. Absolutely. I'm a man and I take absolute self-accountability. You have to, as a man, your superpower is looking in the mirror and understanding everything that happens to you, both good and bad, to a degree is your fault. It could have all been influenced. I could have avoided all of this. I could have avoided the matrix attacks, or sorry, I could have avoided jail cell, if you don't let me using that term. I could have avoided all the negative press. I could have chosen to work in Starbucks and just stayed nobody. 
I made choices that put me in this position. I take responsibility for them. I said things on the internet in a satirical way on videos that got 110 views when YouTube was brand new that I did not expect to become the most viral videos in the world because I didn't expect to become the most famous and known person on the planet. That's all true. I'm not saying I have no part to play in any of this. However, I can still say that I'm completely innocent. I can still say that it is only my fame and notoriety that has inspired the prosecution service to try and even put me in jail in the first place. I can still say that there's some unfair policing in the world depending on your political views. I can still say all of those things mm -hmm. while accepting absolute responsibility for the situation I am in. Andrew Tate, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. There it is. So I'm not sure why that was cut out. It's not like that was the second part to the interview. For some reason, when they initially edited the video, they cut the section of him talking about um, Hamas and Israel out of the interview. I don't know if maybe producers didn't want it to be in there in the first place and then they changed their minds and they put it out as a part two. Or that's kind of weird to me that it was put out as a, as a two-parter. But interesting stuff. Andrew Tate is absolutely hilarious to me. Um, and I agree with him on most stuff. But this Hamas shit is retarded. And I think he has that stance because of his conversion uh, to being a muzzy. Which doesn't make any sense. You're supposed to be a smart, logical guy. I mean, read the fucking book, bro. It's full of bullshit. It's full of bullshit. But... It is what it is. It is what it is. But shout out to everybody who tapped in today. We appreciate you. Donna, BMC, Amik, as always, we appreciate you guys for tapping in. Sorry I missed the stream yesterday. I apparently forgot to pay Rumble, um, so I couldn't go live on there. Uh, it took a day to clear up, but uh, it, we're, we're back on track. So we'll be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Tomorrow is Biblical Wednesday. So we're going to get back into some more of the Bible. Um, I believe we're on Mark. We're reading the Gospel of Mark. So if you want to get into the Bible debate, chop it up with us. Tomorrow we'll be on at 2 o'clock. Um, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right, folks. Until tomorrow. Hasta mañana. Adios. Later, later. Bye.